Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight I see you broken and beat Head pulled down over your eyes Every part of you wants to surrender Darling, you were meant to survive With every star We are born again Open your heart Spend this time in your head So now you're here again, knocking at my door A little too late for, I'm sorry for The lights went out cause you kept cutting the cord And I started to fade into your grave See, I finally opened up my eyes And I saw me coming back to life That I'd be better without you inside It's time to Someone I wanna recognize The future starts right now I made a reservation But you never came So I'm checking out The fire you stole away I know one day we'll come back around The future is now I'm starting to break out from your grave See, I finally opened up my eyes And I saw me coming back to life That I'd be better without you inside It's time to be someone I want to recognize The future starts right now I made a reservation but you never came so I'm checking
<laughs> All right. Yeah. We pretend that we're casting. Well, we're something. getting ready to at least, right? We are. Deeper, I will shout. Let me know when I get closer. Open up the sky for me. When you say I'll dig much deeper, I will shout.
ET Special Edition Kellogg's Note 10 5G Out of date Yeah. 
We are finally here. It's time for Flash versus Snow in the ASL Finals. This is going to be Flash's last StarCraft tournament for a very long time, possibly ever. We don't know. Flash, the greatest gamer of all time, not just the best StarCraft player of all time, but the greatest gamer that has ever lived. He may be meeting his match today. Snow has brought Protoss versus Terran like we have never seen before in the 21 years of StarCraft history. Uh, he may be meeting his match here. Will Flash win tonight? I think it's very likely, but it's going to be tough. No doubt about that. This has been an awesome season, a great way to close out an illustrious career for Flash. Of course, there is another man battling for that title here in Children's Grand Park, where we have just a massive crowd gathering right now. The games haven't even started, and it's almost a capacity. Yeah, it is packing up here. Uh, if you're on the way down here, it's probably going to be standing only by the time you arrive if you're getting here around when our first game is going to begin. Um, this is going to be incredible. It is a best of seven, by the way, for this ASL finals. And in the past, we've had a best of fives, but we're going to be using all seven of our maps. Mm -hmm. Expect to see every aspect of PBT played at its highest, most perfect level. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. The two strongest ever in the matchup going at it. So this is going to be an absolutely fantastic finals. Tell your friends, help us spread the word, because this is going to be an epic and history making night. I cannot wait. Um, everybody is still expecting Flash to come out on top here. But let's remember the last time these two faced off in a major tournament, Snow, in fact, came out victorious 3-2. to two. That is true. Uh, he absolutely did. He knocked him out in a round of eight. So tonight is more about, more than just the title or anything like that. It's also about revenge. Yes. It's also about coming back and trying to dominate and, and, and clean this last stain off of his career, his almost markless history. That's right. But, uh, Tasteless, I tell you, this has just been awesome. It's, it, it's, it's such a story to see such a strong player because we've never had anything like this in the history of esports to have a player this dominant. Well, here's one thing to note because I know whenever we talk about this, we're always getting people tweeting us saying, well, what about the player in my game? What yeah. about this? Yeah, what about him? Yeah, <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing you got to remember, everybody. StarCraft is 21 years old, okay? There are people playing StarCraft that were born after the game came out. We don't have any game. Well, we're getting more games that are like this as time passes, yeah. of course. Um, but we don't have anything quite like this yet. This is We've had so much time to unpack, to master, to discover, uh, and, and, and try to solve StarCraft. And, and, and the fact that Flash has been this dominant is incredible. And speaking of which, in the votes here, all of the other ASL players said that Flash should win. That's Lee Young-ho at the bottom, Flash's name. That's right. Nobody voted for Snow. Now, that doesn't mean that Snow doesn't have a shot, but if these players are betting men, they're going to say, absolutely, you got to go with Flash. Well, literally, Snow is the player who is not in the military right now that has the best chance in the world at beating Flash. But still, amongst a jury of his peers, zero people think that he'll beat him. That says a lot about Flash's actual level here, about his actual skill level, which is uh, too big to really even describe it. You know, you were talking about how this is just, he's the strongest player and people in other games are thinking, uh, you know, maybe maybe the player in my game is is super good and, and just as good or something like that. And you mentioned that this is an older game and all that. It's also mechanically the most challenging game out there. It requires the most speed of all games. Uh, its depth of strategy is endless. So Flash being head and shoulders above everyone else who's ever played. I mean, the amount of championships he has, this will be his 10th major title, and he holds tons of lesser titles as well. It's, it's, it's insane. Uh, by the way, we had the fan vote showed there earlier on. Uh, only 20% of fans actually voting that Snow will come out on top. The other 80% all for Flash. Mm -hmm. Well, people know. <laughs> you know, you watch StarCraft, you know just how strong he is. Of course, he did play against a Protoss player in the last round, the best Protoss in the world in Rain. Although Rain does not have the best Protoss versus Terran style to go against Flash, Snow actually does. But Flash made quick work of him. Yes. It, it, it was so one-sided. All right, guys, we are ready to start the finals. This best of seven is... Oh, God, I'm so excited, Artosis. This is going to be so sick. Guys, tell your friends to join us here at the ASL Finals. Flash for Snow starts now.
얼마 전에 기회였는데 잘 살고 있다는 거 보여드린 것 같아서 너무 그거 이런 선수들이 이런 멋진 경기를 팬들 앞에서 여전히 보여주고 있다는 것을 지켜보기 위해서 저희가 중계를 하는 건 아니겠습니까? to bring out our two players. Again, this is Flash's last tournament before uh, presumably he's going to be serving his military That's service. Right. He's also That's been right. having some problems in his wrists and hands. Um, and he's going up against Snow, the best Protoss vs. Terran player of all time, of 21 years of StarCraft history. We're not screwing around about that either. He is unbelievably strong. His name belongs in those upper echelons alongside Stork and John B. He is one of the only Protosses for the past, I don't even know what it is, like 10 to 15 years to actually have beaten Flash in a best of five. Yeah. That's how scary Flash is. One more time. About 10 to 12 years, nobody had beaten Flash in a best of five. That's right. Snow did it. Um, so insane. Uh, we're going to bring out our first player. I it's Snow coming out first, excuse me. Here he comes now. I long for combat. And here he comes now. Uh, this player has the best Reaver usage we've ever seen in StarCraft history. That's right. That's he right. is a Terran can opener. He is able to infiltrate Terran defenses in a way that we've never seen before. His carrier control is impeccable. He is fine playing the most orthodox macro game, and he is more than comfortable turning it up to 11 and ripping off the knob and doing a completely insane Protoss all in. That's right. This guy is just a monster with his micro. That's really his strong point. He's going to be trying to pick Flash apart, whether it's through Reavers, whether it's through some late game carriers or even a carrier rush. Those are his strong points. 
and now we'll be bringing out his opponent. Again, he has won more than anyone, as or one harder, I should say, than anybody has ever won in any game ever. That's right. The greatest gamer of all time, it's Flash. Here he comes now, and truthfully, as great as Snow is, this is the man everyone came to see. His last professional match, maybe ever. We'll see if he makes a return after the military, but he has a lot of injuries right now. He's been playing through pain for a long time. He even skipped last season, but he said he wants to go out in a big way here. He wants to come to the ASL and win for the fourth time out of seven tries. So crazy. It's going to be tough. You know, the uh, doctors have said that he's going to have to take a long break uh, after this. He has been in pain, but this guy's got a, a lot of stamina. It's, uh, and this is an incredibly important match to him. We're going to have an interview now, uh, and Andy will be translating that for us as we see how our two players are feeling. <laughs> With the two players. And Flash has never lost to a purpose before. And Snow, you were able to accomplish that. And Flash has mentioned that he's going to crush you in the finals today. But you listened to that and then you laughed it off. And Flash goes by many names. God, the ultimate weapon, the final weapon. What do you think, so? First of all, I'm really happy. I've always wanted to play against Flash. And I know there's nothing that lasts permanently. And I'll try to defeat him today. You will defeat Flesh and earn everyone's trust. And today, in the battle against Flesh, how confident are you? When I play against other players, I always say I was 3 0, 4 0. But today, realistically speaking, 4 2. And Snow has challenged to go. Now let's ASL hear from Flash. And Flash, you have established yourself as the greatest of all time. And then you lost to Snow in the season five. And you were, you were defeated another time. And you took one uh, one year, one season of hiatus. During the interview, you said that you will pulverize snow at the children's grand park. How are you feeling today? First of all, I think it's going to be a really enjoyable match. And you know, the original concept, it was kind of like a revenge. But you know, I always got to take revenge, so today I'm going to defeat snow and take the revenge. Right now, Snow is looking so confident. And in the battle with Last, he showed immaculate performance and was able to beat him. And Snow looks like a formidable opponent. And Flash, do you think there's a chance that you might lose? You know, I think he's a really good player, for sure. Oh, he's good? But as for me, I don't really look at my opponent, I just um, look at my condition. So, you know, I'm not worried at all. Until now, all the finals that was held in Children's Grand Park, you never lost that match. Never, ever. How are you feeling today? Well, I feel great, but I know it's not going to be an easy game for sure. Personally, I feel like it's going to be a full one to me. 
Yeah, oh, just giving one set, and he's gonna take it all. And Flash is smiling a bit right now. And he surely looks at it. And he just mentioned that as uh, long as his condition's good, he's able to beat you. What about you, Snow? Well, he's a phenomenal player for sure. And he's considered the best. You know, I will not make him perform at his 100% level today. Do you have full confidence to um, triumph today, Snow? You know, I'm a pro gamer as well. So I never come to the venue with a, uh, with a thought of losing. And again, he's a really good player. So it's definitely going to be an arduous game for sure. But I'm going to um, try to win. And Flash, would you like to say something to Snow? Well, he's a really good player, like I mentioned. And, you know, his future looks really uh, prospective. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to try my best. But, you know, I apologize to Snow, but I'm busy, so I'm just going to win today. Uh, would you like to answer that, Snow? I will not take a break. And I will just uh, go all the way today. I think Flash is going to have to take a long break, sure. Now we await for our today's finals match. Who will come out on top? Is it going to be the new Order Protoss or is it going to be Final Weapon Flash? And let us kick off tonight's finals match.
높은 데부터 바로 16강부터 하기에는 좀 부담이 많이 됐을 것 같아요. 좀 밑에서부터 치고 올라온 게 다시 경기력도 찾고 한큰 요인이지 않았나 싶어요. 아, 장윤철의 플레이는 대단히 좋은데요. 이런 운영, 이용호 아니면 또 누가 할수 있을까요? 어떤 테란을 만나도 앉을 것 같았어요. 이상하게 대회 때 오면 은 주사위가 있는 것 같아요. 6이 나왔던 것 같고 6만 나오면 은 경기력이 저도 모르게 달라지더라고요. 준비하는 과정에서도 완벽하지 못했고 자신감을 이시해야 될것 같아서 인터뷰 좀 세게 했지만 그만큼 결승에 이번만큼 올라가겠다는 강한 의지였고요. 생각보다 너무 쉽게 올라와서 오히려 전략도 많이 숨긴 것 같고요. 그래서 결승전 지금 이때 다 보여드릴 수 있을 것 같아요. 윤철이랑 하고 싶어요. 제가 당하고는 못 살아서 복수하는 아... 식으로 네, 하겠습니다. 결승 무대 가서 장윤철 보시도록 하겠습니다. 이영호 선수 인터뷰를 봤는데 자꾸 저랑 하고 싶다 하더라고요. 잘 됐다 싶어요. 만나서 제가 또 이기면 두 번째 이기는 거니까 그때 되면 은 아무 말 못하지 않을까 싶어요. ASL 시즌 5, 이영호 선수 장윤철 선수 매치를 기다리고 있어요. 그 당시에는 이제 시청자 투표에서는 거의 제가 1대 9로 밀리고 있었고 이제 게이머들 투표에서도 한 3대 7로 밀리고 있었는데 제가 이길 수 있지 않을까 싶었거든요. 근데 진짜로 이기더라고요. 졌을 때는 물론 뼈 아팠어요. 뼈 아팠고 그때가 대표이 되지 않도록 반발 준비를 해왔습니다. 하영 때 졌었지. 넌나 이겼으니까 나한테 게임으로 죽어봐야지. 김정우 선수한테 못 갚았던데요. <웃음> 저한테도 못 갚게 해줄 거고 저번에 한번 실패했으니까 저는 두번 실패는 진짜 잘안 하거든요. 그때는 3대 1로 이긴 것 같은데 이번에는 4대 0으로 이길게. 테란전 원래 자신 있죠. 뭐 테란한테 세고 이런 거 저는 사실 그게 중요하지 않아요. 항상 제일 잘한다는 생각이기 때문에. 제가 마지막 프로토스인데 프로토스는 테란을 잡아야 돼요. 프로토스 대표로서 혼내주도록 하겠습니다. 이번에 해보면 알 거예요 아마. 8강 때 이겼던 거와는 또 차원이 다른 경기를 결승 때 펼칠 거기 때문에 김철이한테 벽을 선사해 주도록 하겠습니다. 우승자 출신을 다음 시즌에 맨날 잡았어요. 강한 사람들한테 좀 면역이 돼 있거든요. 이번에도 제가 이길 수 있을 것 같고 제가 제대로 보여줄게. 여기 와주신 팬분들 너무 감사하고요. 제가 또 킹슬레이어라는 얘기도 제법 듣고 있는데 말 그대로 왕들 다 잡아내도록 하겠습니다. 우리 쪽쪽쿠 여러분들 오늘 기쁘게 집에 가세요. 좋은 기억이 있는 버린이 대공원이고 한 번의 패배도 없거든요. 프로리그 때도 2승을 했고 ASL 때도 또 3대0으로 이기고 이번에 4대0 이겨서 9승 0패로 무실점 하도록 하겠습니다. LA TV ASL Season 8 Expansion Skeletons that we hide Misery in our eyes But she don't know Cause we don't show Perfect on the outside Broken on the inside But she don't know Cause we don't show Skeletons that we hide Misery in our eyes But she don't know Cause we don't show All right, we are here. The players are in their seats, and soon we will begin the ASL final, Snow versus Flash. It is so exciting. I love that both of them are confident here. Uh, and I, I feel like they both absolutely have the right to be. Obviously, Flash, right? Of course he's of confident. Course. He's the greatest there ever was. But Snow looks unbelievable in this matchup. He played against yeah. Lass in this tournament, who is considered by far the second best Terran in the world, the only one that comes anywhere near Flash. And he smashed him. He smashed him so easily. Um, while Snow got this far in the tournament by overcoming a lot of his problems in PVZ, his PVT has always been something that no one has ever really been able to recreate. He seems to know exactly how to break a Terran at any given moment. Um, so often Terrans have become so good at um, walling themselves off entirely and becoming uh, impenetrable, uh, teching up, cutting corners, and Snow punishes that every single time. So there's going to be a lot of mind games going on here with both these players. Uh, Flash said in that interview 
that he has a lot of strategies he has not uh, had to show mm -hmm. on his road to the ASL Finals and that he'll be using his very best uh, anti-Protoss builds here tonight. Well, I tell you what, yeah, Snow smashed last, right? But Flash just smashed Rain, okay? So yeah. we basically, we definitely have the best players in this matchup going up against each other. That, that was one of the big questions was when Rain was fighting, uh, you know, Flash, what is this going to look like? And, and Flash smashed him so easily. It was one of the shortest broadcasts we've mm -hmm. ever had here at ASL. Absolutely. You can see that path right through here. Snow with the 3-0 over Last, the second best Terran in the world. Flash with the 3-0 over against Rain, the best Protoss in the world, although not the best Protoss versus Terran player in the world. These two are meant to fight here tonight. And this is going to be one hell of a fight here. Uh, it's going to be a best of seven now. Uh, we've already seen with votes from uh, both the other pros who have been eliminated in ASL and the fans, it's very flash heavy. But I think the games, the results are going to be incredibly close. And we might, we might just have an upset here where Snow takes this. There is a possibility of that, absolutely. I mean, we didn't think it could happen before. Uh, and the last time these two players fought off, we knew it was going to be a great match because Snow, uh, even then we knew had an, an incredible PBT. But uh, he did it, and now here he is again. They both have a 76% win rate in this matchup to show Jesus. that is extremely high. <laughs> of course, you saw that Snow overall, he's a little bit weaker in the other matchups. He's got like a just under 60% win rate, whereas Flash here in ASL, 74.5% so win rate. Crazy. It is, I want to point out it that it doesn't even make sense. Generally, guys, uh, top tier players have like a 55% win rate or yes. something. Uh, in matchups, because remember, they're playing against the other best players yeah. in the world. It's not some ladder record or anything like that. Mm -hmm. This is actual professional tournament matches against the greatest of the greats. And both these guys at 76% win rate in the respective matchup. Oh, yeah. I mean, once you hit 60%, you're basically a champion no matter what. Uh, it, you know, this is... I am so unbelievably excited to see these two match up because, again, Snow has a style that can do better against Flash, I think, than what Rain has. You know, he's so good at that micro. He's so good at Reavers. He's so good with carriers. And that's going to be a bit harder for Flash to deal with. But here's the big thing. When Flash beat Rain, he had a lot of preparation time to, to get ready for this match. And Flash is, he's not only mechanically the best player in the world, he, he tops out everything, of course, but he's the smartest. He single-handedly dictates the metagame in all the Terran matchups. He reinvents the metagame. He changes the metagame before even people even realize that like Zerg or Protoss are figuring out Terran builds. He will start working on the new stuff that he knows is going to come next. Yeah. So the fact that he had this much time to prepare, sure, I'm sure Snow brought good stuff, but this is the greatest mind in StarCraft bringing out his absolute best for his the final match. The greatest mind in gaming, the, the greatest mind in, in, in all of RTS games. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Flash is better at StarCraft than anyone is at anything ever. It's going to be so crazy to see what he pulls off here because look, in the games against Rain, he way uh, out-prepared Rain. <laughs> Rain definitely had some stuff ready, but Flash's strategy is activated. Everything that Rain opened up with played exactly into Flash's hands. And there was a big range, too. If you look at game one, Flash just out macroed him immensely. And then yeah. if you look at game three, he just reacted perfectly and killed Rain when he got offensive gas. Yeah. So you can see that range uh, within Flash's play, he can do absolutely anything. Here's going to be our map lineup. Multiverse, Neo Sylphid, Tripod, New Bloody Ridge, Neo Ground Zero, Overwatch, and Blockchain. Now, starting off on Multiverse is really exciting. Yeah, this is a map Terrans will ban against Protoss each and every time. It should be snow favored. Of course, when a map becomes favored for the other race, Flash generally brings a build no one has ever seen to throw them off. That's right. You can always use just one build once against a player and, and steal yes. that win. And maybe it wouldn't work a second or a third time, but mm -hmm. you only need to win once on that map, especially here in the finals. Yeah, so. This map, I feel like it's important for Snow, but I'm not giving him an overwhelming favoritism in it. Yeah, in theory, there should be some exploits on this map for Protoss to utilize, depending on spawn locations. We'll be diving more into that once we identify where the players have actually started out so we don't get too ahead of ourselves here. Uh, a big moment here for Snow. We really thought the Rain versus Flash games are going to be closer. They were totally not. They were insanely one-sided. Um, but if there's any PVT that could ever beat Flash, it's going to be coming from this guy who seems to have 
such a handle on the race, Taren. Yeah, well, he seems to know exactly where Taren is weak at any moment in the game. Mm -hmm. You can see his previous games this season and his games against Taren lately, his last 10 sets there. Uh, but you know what? It, we keep bringing up uh, Flash just demolishing Rain. But Rain and Last are considered basically the same level. They both won KSL, they both won ASL, they both get top four every season, basically. But just as hard as Flash beat Rain, that's how hard Snow beat Last. So, yeah. like, I mean, these two are head and shoulders above everyone, which makes it hard to predict other than just the fact of the matter that Flash is as strong as he is, and he is yeah. who he is. Yeah. Um, we're going to be taking a closer look at Flash here. He has been having medical problems. Um, in his hands, in his wrists, and forearms, actually. And his shoulder, actually. Is, oh, is it up in his shoulder really as well? bad right now. Oh, I'm, okay. I, I stand corrected. I should thought it was up in his hands more now. Um, he had a major surgery in the past. He recovered. He's back. The doctor recently uh, looked at his medical condition and said, this is the worst I've ever seen. You actually have to stop. Mm -hmm. um, and so he will be doing his compulsory military service after this uh, tournament and will be taking some time off to recover so that he could hopefully come back. Yeah. But uh, this may be the last time we see him. It's and, possible. I mean, obviously, if you're the greatest of all time, you want to come out uh, and dominate it before you have you know, your, your moment to step away. Mm -hmm. So this year, the top one is this season. The bottom one is the last 10 games against Protoss. So he's 10-0 in his last 10 maps. And th that was basically a list of all the best Protosses in the world. It's insane. <laughs> so. Crazy. Our players are now in the lobby. Again, the first map is going to be multiverse. So many things that can happen on this map. It, we can't even uh, begin to talk about yeah, it until we see the spawns. It's weird because normally if it was Neo Sylphid or any other map, we would yeah. have a lot more to just start saying, but we have to check the spawns first. This is a map where you can destroy certain locations to either open up parts of the map or seal them off permanently. Yes. So yes. Again, there's, there's options that this could be a map with a lot of circulation or a map that it, uh, becomes an island map in a lot of ways. Yeah. Uh, when, of course, PVT functions entirely differently depending on the number of islands and isolated locations uh, or the number of open fluid locations. So, uh, yeah, you, can, you can see it's barely been played in Terran versus Protoss. It got vetoed a lot by the Terran players. It's going to be a hard one. This. They were avoiding this map. Yes, they certainly were. But Flash, I, I have no idea what he's going to bring here. The positions are so drastically different based on where you spawn and your opponent spawns. It's anyone's guess. Yeah, is as good as mine, is as good as Snow's, is as good as anyone's compared to Flash here. So crazy, man. Again, guys, this is the best of seven, and game one is ready to go. Snow versus Flash starts now. Boy. Okay, we now know the spawns. It's going to be Snow here in the uh, very lower left uh, as our Protoss player. And in the upper right, well, the bottomish right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. On the bottom <laughs> side of the map, which yeah. is yes. The They're both, yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Okay, so basically through the very center diagonally just above their bases, this map can get cut in half. It has some very small circulation points. But they are in close spawns, not by air, but by land. Yes. This, I would guess, is exactly what Flash would prefer. I think any Terran player would prefer. Yeah, I don't know what he planned, but this is this is the type of situation where Flash might be able to overcome snow just through macro. Yeah, now this the reason why this is important is head, let's say spawn, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, snow spawn in the uh, other locations, the other two possible spawns of this map. Then we could have this map get uh, sealed off in different areas. Yeah. Uh, which might behoove a Protoss player. Might. We Again, this is a map we really don't know a lot about. It hasn't been played on a ton, but general StarCraft uh, theory would tell us I think a Protoss tends to prefer that. But again, you could pull out a one-off strategy anytime and still pull through. So we're going to see 
uh, Snow's uh, ground game PDT uh, at play here, which, of course, he has incredible ground game PDT, the best in the world, because mm -hmm. uh, that's what most PDT is played on. Now, I have to mention, already, Flash busting out a special build here. This is a 10-10-10. Correct. He this stopped is... SCVs for a little bit. Yes, yes. You kind of delay SCVs a little bit. This is something, of course, Flash is great at uh, reducing his economy to get out buildings more quickly. This is going to get you a very, very fast factory. Now, what, what are his plans with this? I just don't know. If you were far enough away spawns, like if Snow is the spot that's like vertically north from here, kind of, I feel like Flash's build, it might look risky in that situation, but this can also do things like speed out a starport or something like that as well. Now, uh, keep in mind, as Terran does this opening, which will allow him to do a lot more on the map early on, he still has given up a high number of SCVs. And so, uh, we want to uh, watch and see if, if Flash is unable to maybe pull off this strategy or do damage early on. Snow should have more momentum. Snow should economically have better tempo here and be able to develop more safely into the mid-game. Yeah, but StarCraft can be a game of seconds. And what we see here, is Flash having a 10 to 15 second quicker factory than is normal. Uh, we just saw the vote on the screen as well, and it looks like uh, three now, players think that. Uh, one one thing to point out, it is uh, a pylon with uh, at the entrance here with the Zealot. So the Terran gets no scout at all. So although Flash's build is already barreling forward here with that quick factory, he doesn't know what Snow's doing. We're going to get a shot of the base here in a second and see if we can see what the tech is. So far, it seems to be Dragoon range, and I believe this is going to be a second gateway here. Ooh. Okay, so this is actually becoming very interesting. Yeah. Uh, I also want to point out Snow cut probes as well here. Mm -hmm. He's doing a double gate with uh, Dragoon range very quickly. And I, I, you want to cut out a number of probes while you're doing this. And so they're actually going to be, both be rushing into each other here. Mm -hmm. Now, look at that. Flash is actually making a vulture before his add-on. Sometimes you just kind of sneak that out so you can lay mines behind and whatnot. But what he's done with his 10-10-10 here is rushed out a starport. Now, is this starport trying to blindly counter something like a Reaver? I don't think so. I, I don't think, think he's so. going to go for a quick dropship. I think he might be right. now. Uh, Snow is also playing a bit of a blind game here, but he's going to have a lot of pressure to attack in here. Uh, and with that amount of pressure, I don't know where this is going to go, to be totally honest. We have two unusual builds interacting with each other yeah, here. Yes. Both players seem to be playing, uh, seem to be opening up as if the other player was going to play a very standard textbook game, and that's not what's happening so far. Well, it's certainly good for Flash that he's getting a bunker right now. But Snow is going to have a lot of Dragoons in the range. Look at this. Snow running past. Oh he my wants God. to see. Are you making a command, sir? No, you're not. He's running by right now. But Flash's micro should be good enough to punish Snow for this run by. OK, the second Dragoon is running through. And he's going to almost get a target down on that Vulture. But he does not. The other Dragoon is picked off. Great control here. He is not going to lose that other Vulture. Oh my and God. And he's basically pinned this in here and will now uh, probably just execute this attack. I have the sickest That was That vulture right control now. was so perfect. It was exactly perfect. He stayed at the very minimum range outside of what the Dragoon yeah. could fire at this moment. And he has still not lost that vulture. But it's not done yet. The pressure is on. The dropship's being made. Two Dragoons are coming out at a time. SCVs will need to be pulled to heal this bunker. And again, there's no command center being made over there, so That's they can't right. get there that quickly. But with the dropship coming in here, <laughs> I'm not clear on uh, if observers are in the game at all. They're not, right? No, there's no. not even a robo starting here. But I think Snow is on to this. Yeah. Snow seems to know that something's gone awry here. So there's pressure over here in the front. No, uh, Snow has a great idea because he did run by, right? He lost extra units for that, but he also saw no command center. You're only making vultures. Where's your siege tank? All of this points towards a dropship. And he's ready for the drop, but the vulture control might be good enough. He can just get in here and start to kill workers off as it is. Yeah, he got, went for speed first, so no mines here. And he's also going to lose the, the dropship, it looks like, but he's killing quite a few probes. Oh, my God, the dropship is going to live. Now, he gets a few probes. I can't even oh, believe Oh, and the bunker that. goes down at the entrance. This is actually getting very, very crazy. Yeah, it is. Now, the, note, note he uh, can, can hide the tank under the uh, barracks if he needs to, so targeting will be more complicated. 
Um, he's pulled SCVs back through there. Now, again, there's, there is still a drop ship flying around on the map. So the, if he had he gotten that, so would be at a much, much, much better position. It's a very good point. Now, is Flash getting siege mode right now? We don't know if he went for mines or he went oh my for God. siege. And he's going for one base. He uh, needs siege. He's going for one base Reaver here as yeah. well. They're both powering up on one bases. Nobody wants to expand yet. They want the fight to continue forward here. All right, Flash has gone for Siege second, a very important upgrade here. This will keep him alive against the Dragoon pressure. The dropship went home, got a unit here. I think he's just dropping a Vulture or two outside. Oh, and Snow okay. does not see it. He doesn't see this. This could be the attack that comes in here and kills all of the probes. Look at that, though. There is a probe waiting to see if something like this happens. It sees those two Vultures, but it looks like they could get by. No, they actually turn around. Oh, does that... They can run through that, right? Yes, the they pylon, they have that. to be yes. able to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So right now, it is one base against one base. You never see a game like this. You never, never. ever see a game like this. To go for 10-10-10 into 10 10 Starport, into second factory against a one base, two gate, into Reaver. I know, this is this is a one of a kind game. These are the PBTs that you just never get to see at this level of play. Now, again, the SCVs are being picked off. What is that being made in uh, the Terran's main? Did you see that? I believe that? that's an engineering bay, but okay. I am not 100% Yeah, on that. I'm not, th these builds have gotten so unusual at this point in time. It um, could be another factory as well. That's a, that is a you possibility. You think it could be three factory you here? You can support three factories on one base. It's an no, engineering bay. bay. Okay, okay, that's what we were trying to figure out there. Now he has mines, so he has all the add-on upgrades. Mm -hmm. That, that he needs. He's got a fully functional mech army, but you know, you're, you're never really supposed to be going one base in StarCraft no. in, unless, and the fact that they both went for these aggro builds and kind of crashed into each other. Mm -hmm. Now, well, let's, if either let's, of them try to expand, they might die at this point. Absolutely. They're both being so aggressive. Now, the Reaver's out. Remember, Snow is the best Reaver user in all of StarCraft history. Uh, does not die to that mine. I believe a Wraith was just made, which is yes. the natural defense against the shuttle. That way, the shuttle can't roam freely. Yeah, the Wraith plus the turret should be enough. And Snow looks like he's going to go ahead and expand. Flash is going to want to think about expanding quickly here as well. To push down a, a Protoss that already has a Reaver to shuttle, especially that Protoss is Snow, it's not very likely. So we do not have a command center. This puts a clock on the Flash for the time being. Uh, that's actually pretty big losing that Observer, by the way. You need to have, like, especially on one base, everything you have you don't want to lose. Yeah. Um, well, the dropship coming in here once again. Drops off a single vulture looking for some damage. Yeah, there's no way you can even get a mine planted in that amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, so better to just get one probe kill. Uh, we do not know if shuttle speed has been upgraded. One thing to, to note here, Snow almost always gets it, but I don't know if it can be supported on one base without the major sacrifices elsewhere. Well, especially with how many probes he's lost this game, yeah. it's a very difficult upgrade to get. What, what is that be made out of that? That is a command center. That's a command center coming yeah. here. Okay, So got a it. little bit later than Snow, but that is okay. Flash has an advantage at this point. He's traded vultures several times now for probes. And he's got enough siege tanks, he's got mines, he's got speed, he's got siege mode, and he has a lot of tech in his base. So it's wow. looking completely fine for Flash Artosis, right now. we have a third Nexus here. Mm. Oh, look at that. He catches him trying to take down these assimilators. Of course, if you take down assimilators, they can block the path. Uh, so, so that I, I you think can't this is going to there. be denied here. Great control here by Snow, gunning that mine down before it could even pop up and hit him. I think Flash probably has a good idea that he might be expanding on that side right now. Runs in with Vultures once again, realizing that with those goons out there, there's probably not that much here. And in fact, going to get a couple more probes. Pretty not bad. Worthwhile. Not bad. Um, it is finally time for Terran to take the very first base um, in what has been. And we're hitting the 10 minute marker here. So this is good. Command Center is floating out. It was yeah. one of the most unusual PVTs I've ever casted already. No, it, it, to put this into perspective, at 10 minutes, you are already normally mining from a third base, and you're yeah. hitting like 120, 150 supply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, we're sitting here, first 60, base 70. landing. Yeah, 70 supply right now. Now, I don't know that Terran can be broken here, but as I say that, I have to remind myself that, honestly, Snow has broken so many Terrans in unbreakable positions that we should really be ready for anything. Uh, if Flash is leaning on dropship play, to keep honest, uh, the, the, the the Protoss here. Another set of uh, Vultures coming out. He's got to be careful with those Observers. Can't afford to lose those. Yeah. Now, these Vulture run-bys are so important. Let's see what Flash can get done. His Vultures actually get caught for a moment on the edge there, but he gets four of them in here, targeting out some of these probes. The Reaver comes in, 
It only gets one with that first shot, and he continues to kill a good number of probes. Great block there. You know, these moves, though, I feel like these are good for Flash. He's doing oh, yeah. quality yeah, yeah. damage to kill that many probes. Okay, After this you've is... already killed probes all game long, is definitely worthwhile. All right, this is actually huge. This is one of those moments where it would have been a thousand times better for him to simply have never found this. Mm -hmm. I mean, for Snow, of course, it's better if this goes unnoticed because with the fact that dropships are already at play here, yeah. it's going to be very difficult to uh, keep that base alive. And this will give Flash a much better sense of when he should do his own timing attack. A Terran that goes one base and gets a late second has another problem where it's also difficult to get the third. Yeah, absolutely. And so usually on two bases, you're trying to figure out what kind of timing push you want to do. Well, especially in a situation like this, if you're going dropship and sacrificing vultures all game long, your standing army is a lot smaller, which means you'll end up doing this, getting a lot more factories before your third base. Sometimes that turns into an attack, sometimes it just turns into a late third base. But either way, you look at it right now, Snow doesn't have an easy way to get further up the tech tree because he's taken so much economic damage from these vulture run buys. Okay, more vultures are being filtered out of the map. Uh, unfortunately, you know, with those observers that were lost there by Snow, there's some blind spots here where he's not quite able to spot the vultures coming out in time. And once vultures get to where they are, Protoss has virtually no time at all to react uh, as they can immediately just start gunning down workers like we're seeing right here. My God, he is doing so much damage. Look at that, okay. just destroying this natural. Only three probes left over. Some nice micro here as he starts to push out slowly but surely. Obviously the Wraith can't kill off the shuttle with the dragons protecting it, but Flash is leapfrogging forward, trying to get a foothold out of his choke. We may see Snow add in more shuttles here. It's That's possible. one way you could try to combat a push on two bases, is to just have like sometimes two or even three shuttles of units and plop everything on top of the tanks. Uh, remember, the way this game is being played out, Flash is giving up vultures throughout the game in order to kill probes, but that means that his core push is going to have less vultures with it yes. in the end. So tanks can be targeted by drop much more effectively. You know, one of the ways that you get around something like that is just playing a longer and longer and longer game. Uh, as the supplies get closer and closer to maxed out, those vultures you threw away mean less, and the probes you killed mean more. So Flash is not too likely to push unless he really finds an opening. Now this is where the problems are beginning to snowball. We saw in that last attack, uh, so many probes were killed, and once more, these vultures are gonna come in here. And you just can't afford to lose this many workers here. I mean, as much as this game was a real slugfest at the start, losing um, these workers over and over, and we now see Terran is, by the way, on six factories to the four gates of uh, Protoss. Doesn't mean Protoss can't take a fight, but it's gonna be tough. Well, it, 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 I think if, if Snow is to win a fight in the middle of the map, it'll come down to his Reaver control. Yeah, but at this point, the fact that Flash is very slowly and patiently making turrets and moving his siege tanks forward, that makes it very hard for you to actually utilize the Reaver, which leaves Snow's army basically just being Dragoons. So the longer Flash plays this out, the more he sacrifices vultures to kill probes and slow down the actual teching and the Zog production of Snow, the more favored this becomes for him. Okay, really good defense there by Snow. He needed something like that to bounce those uh, right off of him. I, I imagine right now the number of SCVs that Flash has, the you know, momentum he should have in this game. We're gonna see the push, here we go. Yeah, he is starting to come out on the map right now. He has a lot of units. You can see his supply is a bit higher than Snow's. Don't forget a bunch of this is probably in SCVs as well. So he has killed so many probes for Snow. All right, the turret okay. being set up. This is such a strong push that's coming out. Yeah, uh, it, Protoss will have to engage this perfectly, and even then, I think it's still a, a real long shot here. There do seem to be enough vultures here that uh, there's at least some to get in the way uh, for, for the tanks. Yeah, that's right, and he has a lot of factories as well, let's not forget, whereas Snow's had a hard time adding on gateways. So Flash continuing to maneuver around a little bit. He has a science vessel out here as well. Oh, oh, oh. Big, big mine hit. That's going to really make these Dragoons a lot weaker when the actual fight starts. A third base is being started in the bottom right. Yeah, look at the way that Flash is spreading out right now. He's laying a minefield there. If Snow really commits, Flash can take an even stronger position and trap those Dragoons in there. So Snow has to be very careful how he deals with this. Now, Terran is doing a very, very slow push, actually building turrets along the way with this. Uh, one of the more old school styles of doing this, um, as he wants to make absolutely sure he can get the right foothold here 
and then just choked the Protoss out. Now, Snow is actually keeping up fairly well here with Supply. I just don't know how Snow is going to be able to engage in this. The mines are very well laid. The tank spread is very, very good. Is he going to go for it? Here we go! All right, he's trying to bust right now, bringing in the shuttles, dropping off Zealots. Flash with some beautiful targeting that defense matrix doing a great job, and Snow having to pull back almost immediately, doing no damage. GG, he taps out, and game one will go to Flash. Wow, what an insane start that was. A 10-10-10 yeah, ten, ten wow. versus, what was that? Uh, two, uh, what, two gates. Two gates, yeah, two Speed Reaver. Dragoon. I'm trying to think of when you make the second gateway on that one, 15 or something no, like that? it wasn't a 10-15. Oh, it wasn't a 10-15, yeah, okay. it was okay. a more economic gun opening. But. So he came out right away. Uh, they both were taking blows heavily. Uh, and they both actually played really well. It seemed like Snow might start to get the upper hand, but he did not kill that drop ship that came in. That is he, true. The drop ship kept coming in and out. Uh, had he had two more Dragoon shots on that, it would have been dead. And um, I think Snow had a good idea of trying to take a hidden base, but when enough Vultures kill that many probes, the end game push looks very dominant for the Terran. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, not killing that dropship was definitely an error. Like, you need to kill that off. You only mine 300 gas per minute uh, with one geyser, so it's very hard yeah. to afford to make a second dropship, which was just critical for Flash to do all that damage. Yeah, I think that one small error, it, we could have had a different game. But Flash played brilliantly. Again, you never really see two of the best players in the world both one-basing each other. It's crazy. Yeah. I like no, the sign. Was, yeah, that's an amazing sign right there. Leo. <laughs> uh, we're going to go to a break when we return at Game 2 of the ASL Finals, Flash versus Snow.
재미가 없으면 올레 TV가 아니지. <목소리> 아, 원래 십자가 문 보면 막 화가 났었거든요. 우리 아버지 돌아가실 때 신은 아무것도 안 했으니까. 솔직히 말씀드리면 이게 정상보다 훨씬 더 건강하신 편입니다. 근데 이거 왜 이래요? 침 남쪽에 십자가가 있대. 십자가? 거길 가면 널 도와줄 사람이 있어. 쌍뚜스 쌍뚜스 쌍뚜스. 도미노스 데우스 잡아 이게 뭐예요? 나 그딴 거 빚지도 않는데 이게 왜 생겨요? 이게 왜 생기냐고! 사람들을 홀려서 악마한테 제사를 지내는 사제들이 있어. 거는 주교라고 부르는데. 내가... 그 검은 주교를 찾아내야 돼. 제게 힘을 주셨어. 그 검은 있어요. 도대체 왜 아무것도 안 하냐고? 왜? When I lose control, bad things happen. But it feels good. They're right to fear me. ...처럼 이렇게 보내면 소원이 없지. 30대 더 좋아. <웃음> 아, 그리 경험 아니야? 어, 더 좋아, 더 좋아. 어... 나도 어, 그랬는데... 전혀 믿지 않는 눈치네. 아니, 아니, 아니야. 괜찮아. 군대를 아직 안 갔잖아. 뭐 주위에서는 걱정할 필요가 없는 문제라는 그래, 얘기를 많이 무슨 하는데... 무슨 걱정이야, 약간 이런 느낌 아니야? 어, 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 내 실력적으로도 좀... 난 계속 잘했으면 좋겠는데... 좀 심의한 걱정이 많이 되고... 재검 받으면 뭐안갈 수도 있다. 약간 막 그런 얘기 있지 않았어? 아니, 공, 공이 재검 받으면 공이. 3개월 더 해야 되거든요. 그래서 무조건 빨리 해야, 빨리 해야 다시 복귀해야 돼. 근데 영어 커피 다 마셨어요. 아, 바로 그렇지. 이 커피 좋네. 이 커피 좋네. 뭐야, 이 다방 같은 느낌이야? 아저씨세요? 왜 아까 무슨 얘기하고 있었지? 아, 기억났어, 기억났어. 역시 똑똑하네. 어, 약간 어. 알지? 누나 똑똑한 거. 어. 고대. <웃음> 걱정 말고 그럼 꿈꾸는 30대는 어. 어때? 검색일 수가 돼서 금열수가 돼서 이름도 있어. 빌딩 이름이 이영업 빌딩인데 나는 1층에 커피숍을 할 거고 2층에 PC방을 어. 할 건데 어. 내가 팬들한테 좀 베푸는 그런 걸 하고 싶어. 뭐 예를 들어서 하루 아예 올 공짜 뭐 이런 거. 하루 이영호와 무조건. <웃음> 레더 돌리기 약간. 어, 뭐 그런 것도 있고, 뭐 커피 닭공짜고 이런 것도, 어. 이런 것도 한번 해보고 싶고, 내가 어찌됐든 팬분들 때문에 돈을 번 거기 때문에, 베풀면 내가 생각해도 약간 멋있을 것 같아서. 3층은? 3층은. 싸게 임대 안 되냐? 네, 야, 이거, 아니, 있는 건물이었으면 좋겠네. 어, 3층, 3층, 3층 건물이었으면 좋겠다. 그러니까 3층 자리 하나 줘. 
그래서 내가 아카데미라도 하나 해볼게. 예전에는 뭐 코치나 약간 지도자 쪽도 생각하긴 했었잖아. 어, 근데 접었어. 정말 아예 접었어. 천만 될것 같아서. 이 스포츠에서 한 획을 남길 수 있는 거 뭔가를 하고 싶어. 강구열에 이어서 아프리카에 들어오자. 이용배 이 있어요. 아, 이용배 이 있어요. 나중에 할수 있으면 좋죠. 어, 멋지다. 팔 어때? 이렇게 항상 이렇게 프로필 사진 보면 이 옆쪽에 흉터가 보일 때마다 팬들은 늘 얘기를 하거든. 요새 약간 다시 살이 많이 안 좋아져가지고 혹시나 다시 수술하다고 하면 어떡하나 이런 생각도 많이 하고 요새 좀 불안한 심리 상태긴 해. 근데 이게 많이 얘기하는 걸 별로 안 좋아해. 왜냐면 남자한테 좀 약한 모습 보이고 이런 걸 별로 안 좋아해가지고 어... 얘기 잘안 해. 얘기 잘안 안 하는데 지금 좀 상황이 좀 심각해져서 최근에. 좀 얘기를 했었어. 네, 약한 모습 보여주고 싶지 않다고 얘기했는데 벌은 되게 무서워하네. <웃음> 그렇지. <웃음> 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 스타. <웃음> 왜 그러는 거야 아니, 정말? 아니, 아니, 크지 않아? 왜 내가 내가 키우는 애야? 맞아. 잡았어요? 아니 아니 못 나가게 하고. 아 근데 갑자기 저렇게 무섭지 않아? 아 사실 무섭다 나. 형한테 그래. 귀엽다고? 퀴즈하러 갖고 와요. 드라마. 아 드라마. 아, 드라마. 아, 아, 드라마. 아, 맞네 맞네. 이렇게 벌이 어, 어렸을 때 물려가지고. 별로 말하고 싶지 않은 이야기일 수도 있는데 어. 그럼 진짜 일상 생활할 때조차도 약간 불편감을 느낄 것 같거든? 그치 많이 느끼지. 예를 들어서 비 오는 날 이번에도 갑자기 비가 오더라고. 차강을 하는데 너무 기분이 안 좋은 거야. 왜냐면 나는 갑자기 쑤셔. 막 비가 오면 막 쑤시고 무거운 것도 아예 못 들고 그러다 보니까 오른손을 게임할 때 외에는 아예 안, 쓰, 안 쓰려고 해, 아예. 그래서 걱정이야, 이번 결승 때도. 비 오면, 비 오면, 비 오면. 어디 계십니까? 자, 아래 상무님. 야, 이렇게 안 와. 이거 이렇게 안 와서 가. 말 조심해. 입 조심하라고. 4강 때 레인을 만나고 또 결승에는 또 스노우를 그래서 내가 뭐야? 선물을 준비했어 이거 옥상 같은데? <웃음> 아니 아니 아니지? 모른 척해 아 모른 척해? 아, 아, 모른 척해? 아, 아 뭐야? 방송 언제 했지 되게? 중요한 것도 뭐 일러나? 아 진짜 우산이야? <웃음> 어 마블 어, 나 마블을 진짜 좋아하거든 연기 아니지 지금? 아 진짜 좋아해 마블을 또 스타판의 슈퍼 히어로잖아. 이거 이거 쏘 가야겠다. 비 오면. 파이팅하자. <웃음> 응. 이제 가. <웃음> 와 바로 이제, 이제, 이제 끝났다고? 사라져 빨리. <웃음>
Okay, both players are spawning, sharing the bottom. It's Snow in the bottom right and Flash in the bottom left. Yeah, I'm very excited to see what Snow pulls out in this map as opposed to Flash. Flash has shown us that he can play the most ridiculously strong macro game here. It's a very comfortable map for a player like Flash, where if you just survive for a little bit, you can get up to four bases, even five bases, relatively easily and just macro to victory. That's that's something that Flash uh, stands alone at doing, and he showed that against Rain. Um, a lot of Protosses do like to try to get a Nexus pretty quickly, but you got to be ready uh, for uh, the possible uh, early attack here from the Terran. Uh, if Terrans do go for early attacks against the Protoss and the Protoss holds, usually the Protoss is, is pretty comfortable oh, at trying to close the game. It doesn't mean it's impossible, but you're in pretty good shape at that point in time. Now, if Flash decides to get aggressive here, which would be a real big mind game because it is such a comfortable macro map for him, right. then that would be, I mean, uh, that would be crazy. Like, he might really catch him off guard in that type of situation. I don't really think that's going to happen. I, I really think that Flash is going to go uh, for a more standard macro build. In fact, you can see that people really believe in Flash for this map, even though we have a winning record for Protoss in the ASL. 13 players think Flash will win here. It's just, it's yeah, a comfortable it's... map for him. Yeah, I mean, no, this is just, it's, it's a good it's a good map for a player like Flash, basically, yeah. is, is the way you want to think about it. Uh, for now, we see all the the openings are pretty ordinary here. I mean, we've got Terran going for their gas. So we're going to see uh, if the Quick Command Center is going to be part of this or if it will be a two-factory or factory starport or you know, something even crazier than that. And, of course, uh, we're going to have the Cybernetics Core thrown down here, and then we'll see if it's going to be an immediate nexus yeah. with, with uh, a certain number of Dragoons or if, in fact, Protoss wants to do something uh, obtuse or uh, out of the ordinary. Yeah, I wouldn't be too surprised if Snow tries to mix it up a little bit here. Uh, Flash getting his scout off a little bit quicker than he normally does, but that's not a gigantic deal as of right now. Love we'll to see exactly where he wants to go. Ah, uh, interesting pylon right yeah. there. That, that, I mean, that could be something like a well, proxy reaver. There is also the mind game of simply hiding a pylon yep. and doing nothing with it. Um, because you, you want them to scout you and say, oh my god, there's no pylon, it could be a hidden reaver. But uh, judging from the spawn, that flashes in. This would seem to ideally set up once Snow confirms, and he's going to do that right now by scouting in here. Once he comes in and identifies, okay, I could take advantage of this proxy pylon here. Maybe he yeah. will hide something over here. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be too surprised. Of course, it could just be a hidden pylon to throw Flash off a little bit. But, right, right. Uh, normally, when you just... Oh, 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 oh gets the first kill. Big victory there, and the probe will escape. I'm actually, I almost wasn't processing that SCD no, dying yeah. until it, 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 the last few seconds there because Snow was so cavalier about sending that SC, uh, that probe right over there and just hitting it. Mm -hmm. And RNG was not on Flash's side. The SCD stayed where the probe was when it was attacking him and he got yeah. that kill. That's actually pretty big. Yeah, it is definitely a big deal right there. So the probe gets out. We'll see if it ends up making anything there or he just goes for his quick nexus. Flash is really optimizing his build towards minerals right now. You can see he hasn't been mining gas at all. He's just now restarting. And he's still playing pretty safe, too. Okay, Snow's control is so good. <laughs> oh. This is the greatest probe control ever. Uh, by the way, the Dragoon is already present outside the base. It will now kill that, uh, sorry, the other Dragoon will now kill that SCV. And this means Flash has no scouting on the map until he sends another SCV out. Uh, now behind this, Snow is actually going to go immediately here for a quick nexus. But he already got one kill on that brain, by the way. That's pretty big. Yeah, and what Flash is trying to do right now is zone the Dragoon out so it can't run in to see if there's a command center. Right. So it, he's put extra damage onto that Dragoon for that reason. You can see him continue to push it back. So he's kind of masking what his play is right now, and Snow can't be sure he's expanding. And he actually shot one more SCV out. Uh, that's headed over here towards the north. And that's going to loop back around to try to figure out what on earth uh, Snow is up to because there's so many different avenues of attack here uh, coming from uh, the, the Protoss. But right now it's looking, I think this might be a Reaver setup just because it's Snow. I kind of always assume as the Robo is coming, um, but we'll see. 
with the uh, probe there, it looks like a third gate might be coming. Yeah, so. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah, third, three gate uh, observer should be the yeah. build that we're seeing here you, out of you snow. You can't it's, go three gate reaver, basically. Yeah, if it's two gate, you can go reaver. If it's three gate, you can't. You, right. You can't quite afford it. Uh, Flash sneaks okay. us in. Now, only seeing that second gate tells him nothing. That's right. That's yeah, yeah, right. You, 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 you can you, go you, two gate reaver, so right. not a big deal. So uh, the fact, had he spotted the third gate, that would have been big. But right now, uh, ambiguity still at an extreme here uh, for for our Protoss player. Uh, sorry, for our Terran player. Yeah. Uh, but Snow is playing a very safe build overall. This isn't something that you can realistically get aggressive with or anything like that. Uh, so it's not like Flash is in danger at all right now. And in fact, getting that academy right now, we'll see where he wants to go from here. It looks like he wants to pressure a little bit. Yeah, he's uh, he's going to go for an armory here, Flashes, by the way, which always signals to us that we're going to have a, a, a long investment yes, game here. Yes. But Flash is pushing out pretty quickly here. He's got mines. Yeah, he's laying these mines down. and You, uh, you can see that the Protoss is not sure if it might be a drop coming at him or a vulture run by, so he just doesn't really doesn't really know. Yeah. So he has Dragoons everywhere, and so Terran can pretty safely push out here. He's going to get that pylon. That's a little bit annoying for Snow, not the end of the world. Um, but... Yeah. This is, this is pretty nice for Flash overall, though, right? He's thrown these mines down, and as soon as the Observer comes over and he can remove some of these mines with his goons... Oh, look, notice how he's not actually attacking the mines. This is on purpose from Snow. He's trying to run around and catch Flash off guard because the mines don't have that big a vision. So if he skips killing them, Flash might think Snow is still in his base and end up so losing sick. extra units. This is so smart. It looks like Flash is nearly going to escape this, but yeah, not going for the mines here, just in case he can catch those two tanks and kill them off. That's right. That's exactly what he was looking for here. Doesn't look like he's going to find it. Flash is and back behind his bunker. It's going to be a later Reaver here now. And no siege mode as of yet. You try to get that as late as you possibly can. It's so crazy how brazen Snow is with these attacks. He knows just anything he can do to get a little bit of extra damage. Yeah. And now he's going to go for the tank dive. And one tank goes down. He's going to go for the second. He kills that. And now the third tank will be eliminated as well. ends up getting out two dragoons as well that was that was so worth it for the protoss yeah that was it was a good move from snow no doubt about that now he has some serious map control going on uh he's going up to his reaver tech as well yeah again um so it wasn't an early reaver play a scan will confirm the reavers coming in snow basically almost always gets reavers pvt uh and from behind this he's going to go for a quick arbiter tech up here uh which he can do this gets very gas intensive um, but he's going to go ahead and go for it. Uh, now, when you kill those three tanks, the push will come later. Terran doesn't have a lot of real muscle. The tanks are the muscle yeah. on the ground here. The yeah. vultures you need to be aided with tanks because Dragoons straight up against vultures. Dragoons should win. Um, and this also means you can't really confront Reavers everywhere in your base unless you have enough turrets that they can't land. Yeah, well, with this build that Flash is doing, I... Uh, the Goliaths are going to kind of act as your mobile turrets, so I don't think that Snow is going to get a lot done with his Reaver, but it can slow any pushing down. It can slow taking a third base. But let's also remember that uh, occasionally Snow will just bust into the natural, for instance, mm -hmm. with his Dragoons and Reavers and just start fighting there. He's he's very, very good at this. Um, you're right, it is the mobile Goliath defense. Uh, you're basically covering as much as you can with as little as you can. And I think this is going to incentivize Snow to not attack in here. Now, something I have got to point out, Flash is going up to 2-1 with the second armory in the science facility without a third command center. So this could be in reaction to Snow uh, sniping so many tanks. He might feel like he needs to do a quicker attack than a regular maxed out push. Okay. And in a situation oh. like this, you generally get one very strong push timing up of about seven factories on two bases. It might be worth it for the Protoss to immediately get stasis here. Yes. When you have these big totally pushes agree. coming out, if you can freeze a cluster of the tanks, um, sometimes if you get the vessel as well, that can make it weird. I think against Flash's scans are going to be perfectly timed out here as well. A lot of time with two base Arbiter against a build like this, if they're staying on two bases, Psy Storm and Stasis are your best friends. But yeah. Flash actually throws out the third command center, so it looks like he's just adjusting all of his timings a little bit further back due to those lost tanks. So, 
Uh, there's a fourth base being taken here. Snow really knows the art of mass expanding as a Protoss player. Uh, and I think what we're seeing here is actually, he's monitoring him so carefully, he's not actually producing out of gates, he's just making gates and probes. And then he will completely shift his weight and attention into only gateway production. And you can wave out uh, huge amounts of Dragoons here and suddenly have an army that can really confront the Terran. Now, there's a drop coming out, but it seems like uh, Snow is already going to have a cannon down here to combat this. Yeah, uh, Snow definitely interested in, in not losing in game two like he did in game one, which was to Vulture Harass, killing his probes. Well, certainly the cannon will help with that, but you, I mean, Flash is very willing to trade Vultures right now. He probably needs the game to go quite long to win at this point. So let's see what he gets done. He drops a couple off before that cannon finishes, starts killing probes. Looks like he's going to go towards the main with the next one. Okay, uh, it's very important that this is handled with, with perfection here. Um, he needs to make sure this doesn't kill too many probes. It looks like so far it's pretty good. I mean, you can lose a probe here or there. Yeah, this has been an okay drop for Flash for sure, especially if he gets out with this dropship. Looks like he will. But he causes some lost mining time. He gets a few probes. Some sloppy control by Snow while he's cleaning it up. Loses a couple Dragoons as yeah, well. So it was Flash actually a... Is... Oh! It's actually a pretty big interruption there. I'm kind of shocked that Flash's uh, dropship is just sitting there. Well, there's a lot to do. <laughs> even Flash having a hard time right now with managing everything going on. Now he is floating over to take this third base, laying a few mines. But and Arbiters are out. This is a, yeah. scary, a scary time for Flash. Once the Arbiters come out, the game is forever changed uh, for the Terran and for the Protoss. Because Arbiters just make everything more complicated for the Terran. Now, uh, Snow is an expert at staying on the outer perimeter of a Terran's base very comfortably. It's much harder than it looks. It's very easy to get fished in with siege tank shots, but he'll really tighten the noose uh, in that sense there. And now we have all the gateways done. I don't think there's going to be too many more probes made in this game as he's going to just continuously power out the army that he needs. Yeah, he's, he's doing a great job of macroing up and really having the production facilities he needs, as well as these nice tech bonuses. His Reaver hasn't done anything this game, but of course, Flash very prepared for Snow's Reavers. Yeah, yeah, very, very prepared. Now, um, I don't know if Snow wants to try to dive in at any point in time here. I do, now would not be the time, but occasionally, especially with both Snow and Rain, we had these moments where they will just actually smash through like the Kool-Aid man yeah. uh, in the Terran's defenses. Hey, well, I think that uh, right now for Snow, his Observer, I believe, just got in and saw uh, the add-on number, I believe. And a third add-on's already coming down for Flash. This is a huge sign of what's to come. Flash is not going to push until he has, like, two groups, about 24 siege tanks. Yeah. He will probably start sending out a few more Vultures, trying to get some harassment done to trade his supply efficiently but he is going to try to turtle completely so that recalls don't kill him and get enough tanks that the Protoss army just can't withstand it. Yeah, he's he's going to set up, because he, look, the, the, the common way to play, we're gonna see this I believe now actually, he's gonna try to do a recall here. Oh, and I, uh, I just, yeah, this is a, I think this is a mistake. I think there's gonna just be too much back here, but let's find out how the rest of this attack goes. The tanks are doing a lot of damage. You can see that, uh, uh, Snow, I'm sorry, Flash basically set up perfectly, knowing that this recall is going to come. Um, a lot of times we'll see recalls happen as the Terran leaves, but I think Snow wanted to try to start the cycle. Uh, yeah. So that means one Arbiter's down. Now Arbiter's are going to be coming out. I believe there's a second Starport. Is that correct? I actually didn't see if he has a second Stargate. Okay. I, um, yeah, Stargate, excuse me. Um, but what, what Protoss wants to do is rely on recall. The Terran army in the long run is going to be stronger but mobility goes to Protoss. It's, uh, the Terran army is also quite clunky. It's hard to move it out uh, further here. By the way, the fifth base is being taken, and that's about the last base Protoss needs for now in the game. So we have another attack coming up here. Yeah, not sure exactly what this is going to end up doing. Flash's position is just so beautiful. There's yeah, I, no I, way to break I, I'm a little bit alarmed by that move by Snow there. Well, the, the recall and then that attack, it's like, that is not going to work. You're actually playing into the Terran's hands here. I think he's starting to get a little bit nervous, right? He just kind of did a recall that wasn't very good. Flash is quite prepared. He knows that Flash has the three add-ons. He's going for mass, mass siege tanks, uh, which is really the counter to mass Arbiter, right? If you have enough tanks, because that's what you're trying to do is stasis the siege tanks so the damage of the army's gone. Right. But he's going to have so many, you literally can't even do it. 
And Flash is going to have three, two before the real push comes. So that is just as scary as a Terran mech army can be. Yeah, it's, hmm. Well, they're both getting to that maxed out point. I'm worried for Snow here. He kind of took some of his assets this game and, and, and was a little bit clumsy with them. And we know that this push is going to be coming out soon. Terran is reaching the boiling point here. Uh, this push is going to come out and you can absolutely smother a Protoss. So Protoss needs to rely on counterattacks uh, and positioning. Well, that's kind of the funny thing, right? Because we were talking about why this map is good for Flash in particular. And that's because he can get five bases. You see him starting to siege up and lay mines to the north of his third base. He's floating a command center over for that mineral only base. And then he will take the high ground with another gas. Once he has all of those up, I mean, he's gonna be sitting here on 3-2 with three armor on the way. So Ouch. many siege tanks as well. Okay, a small attack coming up here, but it seems like Flash has already sealed off this area as well. And, and you're absolutely right, Artosis, that basically once you start to get enough bases as Terran, your mission is done, right? And so yeah. any place, any, uh, any map that allows you to actually move out into those spots is really good. And I, I'm not sure that there's actually a weak spot over here. I mean, it looks like we're gonna have a recall here, but there's yeah. enough tanks position. Well, he might, uh, that's not the best recall, I think. Flash is super ready for this once again. Snow trying to get something done, but Flash just not allowing it. Yeah, I, I think that we're seeing Snow really uh, not just get outplayed, but I think make some very poor decisions here. I mean, what, what Flash did after losing those three tanks is basically say, I'm not gonna leave, I'm gonna get all the bases I need. Now, that being said, let's look at where the Protoss really is in this game. We have two forges going with upgrades. Mm -hmm. He has basically all the tech he needs. He has an insane amount of gateways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I worry though because of the Arbiters that were lost and the recalls that were wasted. Yeah, it, well, you know, Arbiters are amazing as you get bigger and bigger numbers, you can get green stasis down, start doing the recalls. I, I think he's just, he's entering into the position where Flash is unbelievably strong and where yeah. Snow tapers a bit. This is, yeah. Snow is very good with these types of armies, but it's not his best. He's a carrier player. He wants to get into carriers. It's not a good map for carriers. And really, Snow is much better in the early and mid game. We're getting into Flash territory of the yeah. Supreme late game well, this is where he has everything. This is where Protosses tend to struggle against Flash the most, to be honest, it's just that he mapped out a way that you can just absolutely take on a Protoss in the late game. Uh, well, so we he has no fear attack. of the late game Protoss. No, he has none. So now we're gonna see him move out. And I think we're gonna have a recall that we're not getting on camera here. There it is. Whoa! That is a serious weak recall, Artosis. Yeah, that is a lot And there's of actually damage. not very much to defend. And this was the play that we needed to have. And now the army's getting pulled back and that's exactly what Flash I'm sorry, that's exactly what Snow wants here. Absolutely. Notice how he's moving down and killing turrets. This is a crucial part yeah. of this. The turrets are more important than the depots or the SCDs. Yeah, and that sounds weird, but it's so hard and so time consuming to set up more turrets that his next recall can come in before Flash is ready again. And Snow's getting the setup here in the north. We have another attack. He's looking for the soft spot. Terran has to hit this and hit this hard. I love bringing the Reaver in here as well. It just makes it that much more difficult to really fight here. Yeah, you can't attack move through into the Reaver quite as easily. Have to jump those siege tanks forward. Now, Snow is expanding again. He's moving his army in the map very well. Flash has decided it is time to counterattack. Snow is going to try to come in here and engage this. I don't know if he should. Now, he forces a siege. Keep in mind, Snow is actually expanding towards the upper right. Another recall is also available. Snow must rely on recalls to reposition Flash's army. Flash's army alone is going to be too strong, and there it is. Okay. The other perfect recall, and so many SCDs are going down, and Flash is going to ditch it. Yeah, I think that's a great call from Flash. A counterattack coming through the center of the map. So much of Snow's army is up here. Sure, you get to kill the base, but that's about it. Flash is out for blood right now. Snow with another counterattack ready. He's going to probably have to leave those Dragoons up there. Flash moves back again. This is the I main army. It might be too much. How many siege shakes he has? He has over yeah. 30 tanks right now. This is a huge army for Terran. EMP comes down on top of those Dragoons. And uh, I don't know, can Protoss actually fight this? We're starting to see those vultures thin out. That's when, when you see those uh, tanks actually connect, that's when you actually have, uh, I'm sorry, the vault, the vault's actually on the tanks, that's when the tanks can actually be killed. 
it Flash's army is cutting through snows like a seeker missile through butter, tasteless. It's crazy. This army dying so quickly, even the Zealots running up, it doesn't matter. There's so many tanks coming down, and Flash has another giant line of units coming to reinforce. Yeah, more siege tanks sieging up over here, and remember that all the gateways for the Protoss were inside of the main. He never took another location, which means that he can actually choke out this position. There's no way to really get your army out here. Imagine they're trying to reset all these rally points, Artosis, and Protoss. And I think that might be the killing blow. It could well be. He's killing another base here. Looks like Snow going to try to bring the remnants of his army up uh, to flank this a bit. He just doesn't have enough. He's down 50 supply right now with no bank. Yeah, and he's just unable to remake. And uh, this is an unusual kill here on a Protoss. Normally, you see their expansions pushed and taken out. Instead, he's going to come in here and stop any army from actually moving out from this location. And then he can have small groups of army go and hit different locations from there. Now, I, I mean, it seems like Snow is just about dead here. That's GG. it, GG. And Flash goes up just like that, two to zero. I'll tell you, though, I think Snow made some mistakes right in the um, with his two recalls there. Yeah. I think he was a little bit impatient. Well, he, he needed to wait for Terran to spread out a little bit more, and then he could start yes. really recalling there. Well, you saw the recall that actually worked out, right? Right. He waited a, a, a little bit later until Flash was spread out, like you mentioned. And yeah. then he was able to get in, get rid of turrets. But where were the backup recalls? Where were the stasis after that? He had thrown away two Arbiters that were earlier on that could have had a ton of energy by then. Every Arbiter recall is a economic, uh, is a resource of his own, I should say. And you got to be careful with how you use those. One or two bad recalls at the start is going to make it very difficult, especially against Flash, and perhaps I should say impossible, to recover. But we're done with that map, and that was the one map we absolutely expected Flash to dominate on. And I think Snow actually played really well. I think he showed exactly why he's scary in his early game. Yeah, yeah. But Flash so masterfully just sealing off every possible opportunity until he could then come down with that push. And again, the push itself was brilliant. He could he contained the location where the gateways were coming from. And because of that, there was just no way to uh, have his army save all the other expansions that Snow had. All right. Game number three going to be coming up pretty shortly here. And it's going to be on the map Tripod. Yeah, this is a very, very strange map. I really am not sure what we're going to end up seeing here in a TVP. Yeah, I'm not sure what to expect, honestly. Um, I don't know, actually, now that I think yeah. about it. We don't get to cast a lot of PVTs on this no, map. No, no, we really haven't seen them. This so. is usually a map that I think both these races would be happy to avoid. But in a best of seven, uh, assuming, well, I mean, we're going to have seven games maximum. We have to use every map we have here at ASL. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, we could see something crazy like the first game. We could see a macro game like the second. Either way, uh, air superiority can be strong early on. I wouldn't be surprised if Snow falls back on his Reavers, maybe even goes for carriers. But later game, you can open up the entire map and get a lot of unit flow through the center. So that could be an area where Flash, once again, is very scary. We saw Flash get up. We do allow the players to have small breaks in between the games. He's got to be feeling confident, though. You know, game one was a nail biter at the start, but Flash eventually overcame. Game two was Flash uh, par for the course. That's the Flash we know and fear. Oh, you killed three of his tanks earlier on? No problem. He'll take yeah. a later third, max out with three 230 tanks and kill you. It's crazy what this guy is capable of. Snow has just now joined the lobby. We are still waiting for Flash to come in. It's Flash with a 2-0 lead. Uh, I've just been notified Flash has requested a little bit of extra time here, uh, which we will give him. Um, but we're going to Tripod. This is a weird map. Yeah. And we'll be talking a lot about this as we get into the game. Yeah. But the short of it is that there's two ramps into your main. And there's basically two naturals you, you get, but... Yeah. Reduced mineral and reduced gas, but very easy to take. Hard to attack your opponent early on in this map. It's very I think so. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's and very interesting, by the way. We've been showing uh, their online records. There's a lot of online... Uh, things called like uh, spawn spawn matches, and you can see Flash a huge win record on this map. All right, uh, our game is now ready to go. This is game three, Snow vs. Flash. Let's go. Fight.
All right. Snow in the center right uh, on this three-player map, and we will have Flash in the upper left. So I, I don't know, I don't know about you, Artosis, but I really am, am not familiar with PVT on this map. No, no, I have no and, idea um, what we're going to see. I, it, it is a very oddly shaped map. This is one of these maps where it's a lot harder to just move your army around no matter what race you're playing. Um, it does seem to be a map where you are able to point yourself away from your opponent, yep. uh, which is unusual on almost any StarCraft map, but this is one of them. Um, and so we had 10 of the players vote that Flash would win on this map, only three voting. Uh, for Snow. Yeah, it, one of which, uh, Best, right there, thinking that Snow's going to be able to take it. Uh, so that's kind of interesting, as Best is a player that plays with Flash a lot and one of the best Protosses in the world as well. This may be, uh, you know, one of these maps where the secret sauce strategies really come into play here. It definitely You know, be. where it's like, look, I, I got this one trick, okay? It's like a magic trick you can only perform once, but if they're not ready for it, they will just straight up lose. Mm -hmm. And that could be for Terran or for Protoss, by the way. Uh, that being said, maybe we have a, this go to a more uh, standard PVT. I do think this is a map where we could see carriers, and Snow is, uh, I think out of all the things that we know him to be amazing at, Reavers into carriers is probably, I'd say, the most scary thing he can do. Yes, it is. That's where his real strength lies. He's so He's, great with carriers and so great with Reavers, and those yes. two fit together very, very well. Yes. And so uh, we, we do want to keep that in mind here as well. Uh, okay, so the two SCVs coming. This was a 10 racks. So I could see him, I think what he's doing here is he's predicting Nexus first, which would actually be completely standard on this map because it's so hard to proxy barracks. And he's ready to S SCV and Marine rush it because it is, it is at 10 barracks, but- It is not Nexus first. That's right, which is going to make Flash's build. It's not gonna work that well. Like if you're just going 10 racks with double SCV scout, you're kind of sacrificing your economy in a couple of places, and what you're going to find is a completely standard opening from not, Snow. Yeah, not just that. He just doesn't have any gas. He's going to have to throw down a CC, which I, I know that is going to be the plan B, the transitional yes. build, if he doesn't see this. Um, but, you know, you got to be careful against Snow here because Protosses do like to rush Terrans who do this. Mm -hmm. And, again, you have two ramps into your, uh, your base, so... Uh, as we were saying earlier, Terran points themselves away from the Protoss, expanding there, but that doesn't mean Protoss can't hit that from two sides. Now, uh, there may be the more uh, organic response to this from Protoss, which would be to simply try to expand himself uh, and match this, which is what is uh, more more common here in StarCraft. Yeah, I'm unsure which path he's going to end up taking. Uh, you know, he has a Zealot coming up that shouldn't really do much. The Flash already has three Marines at the top of his ramp, so he's not going to be too scared about this Zealot. Uh, where does where does Snow go to from here? Yeah, I'm gonna just yeah, I'm, run I'm away. I'm just not sure. Um, it looks it looks as though he wants to set up his own nexus down here. Yeah. Or did I speak too soon? There's actually a probe going all the way down. I so let's think let's hold might, out. This could be to expand down here somewhere. I'm not entirely sure. Well, the main. Oh, look at that! He runs into an SCV. So whatever he was gonna do, it's changing now. Yeah. What, a, what an odd game here. Yeah, this is looking very again, weird. Again, Snow still hasn't shown what he wants we, to do. We really do. don't get to see a lot of professional PVT on this map specifically. Um, and so we don't really know what to expect. Another probe is out. It appears that he wants to expand. Again, it appears he does. But we don't have it yet. Yeah, yeah. Is he just going to expand to the center? That would be a very what? interesting move. Wow. Wow. Why? Wow. How strange. Okay. Okay, I, I never would have guessed this. I would say, yeah, it's a little bit tricky. Let's not forget, as mentioned previously, these two expansions right outside your base have reduced mineral and patches and reduced gas. The center bases are very important. Maybe what Snow is looking for here, like if you're gonna go something like Reaver, your opponent can't attack that very easily. You're gonna have a lot of mobility. So okay. I wouldn't be surprised if from here, we, oh my God, double wow. expand. Double expand. So one is just simply a hidden base, and the other one is the one he wants Flash to find. Okay. Okay. Flash is going to come up and see this, and the timing of this, Flash is going to look at that and say, you have tech. 
Yeah, it's a very important to note that the first Nexus was made out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. The second Nexus was made in the organic location one would expect. And so, because this the, the second Nexus, which in this case, uh, Flash is going to assume is the first Nexus, yeah. you nailed it, Artosis. Yes. He's gonna think, oh, you made a robo before yes. you made a Nexus. So, or, you know, and so, he's gonna be getting ready for that. And so he's making turrets and Snow's plan has worked out. It has worked perfectly. These turrets are so useless. They're the exact opposite of what you want to do here. Making all, like, the amount of money he spent on turrets is basically a command center at this point. Correct. So Snow has truly tricked Flash. Yes. The thing is, based on what Flash scouted, it's a brilliant response because you know he has to have something because the Nexus is too late. Right. It doesn't fit into any known build order other than one base tech. And so, instead, it's going to be three gate Dragoon, passive play. No, look at that. He's making a Wraith oh Artosis. That's the a other thing you don't want. A to fight a shuttle and a Reaver that's not coming. Yeah. So now he's going to have this very expensive Starport, this very expensive Wraith, three turrets, and engineering bay. He's playing so defensively against, I mean, Three game Dragoon Observer, you're not taking any damage. You're in perfect shape, you're happy. I gotta point out too, uh, Snow never transferred probes to the Hidden Nexus. Yeah, He is smart. only making probes there because he is intent on having this never scouted. Now, it, again, it's, it's kind of hiding in plain sight, mm -hmm. but look at where the Wraith is scouting. Because, of course, if he was going to take another Nexus or high tech, because he sees now, okay, where's the shuttle? I'm not it, yeah. being attacked yet. Exactly. Snow, just with a random dragon oh my god. here. Oh my god. Okay, so he will oh end up god. scouting it. Boom! Okay, he so sees it. Flash cannot be feeling good about this. Now, that, that being said, uh, he doesn't have any easy punishes here. He's making no. his own third command center. Prolos is going to like this position. When you see that they're making their third CC, because you were, because Terran thought they had to stay back and defend. Uh, Armory is now coming down two of them <laughs> at once. You can see how far behind Flash feels he is. Yeah. Third command center, double Armory right now. He's going to throw out a drop ship as well, see if oh, he gets some tank. sort of harass. Is there a drop? Oh, of course, yeah. Well, it's above Most that base, but you know, it, I, I don't know that he's going to really get very much done with this, to be honest. He, he, does, he could not afford to lose a drop ship, by no. the way, with the tanks in it. Absolutely not. Can you hit the minerals from there? I actually don't know. I guess, yeah, yeah you I can. It's you a siege tank, yeah. But look, right now, Snow is going into carriers. And normally against carriers, what you want to do is a, a very quick punishing attack before they hit critical mass. Flash is sitting here, just made two armories, and has one factory. There is no attack that can be had. Snow will have a lot of carriers before they really engage each other. This is looking absolutely marvelous. Is that dropship full of something? He's no, just using I this as spot, right? I think he's spotting, yeah. Okay, one shuttle is out. I believe that might just have zealots in it. Mm -hmm. Or it, even a couple goons would be good okay. here. Flash is so good. Oh my god. He basically delayed mining from that one spot and, he gets and out gets out away. Last second. I don't even understand how he has that kind of game sense. It's well. He's delayed mining from just three mineral patches. Mm -hmm. Um, but that was enough to be a headache and then got away. And keep yeah. in mind, guys, if he lost the dropship of the two tanks, he'd be further behind. So yeah. it's like, Flash is so good at skating on the edge. <laughs> He's so good at this. He, he is. And now we have uh, Snow actually making his carriers. Flash is adding on. Yeah, he scans the carriers. This cannot be a happy moment for him because he just his upgrades are slow. He's not going to have plus two attack for quite some time. Plus one air weapons should have already started as well here. Yeah, it's been going and a so, while. And so, uh, and actually he'll get plus two very quickly as well behind that. Yeah. Um, and the number where carriers can really start to do stuff is about four. Mm -hmm. Occasionally you can use two like in combination to like interact with, uh, or to, to, to draw uh, attacks away from turrets and try to drop Reaver's places, but I don't think we're going to have that this game, this time around here. Yeah. And so what the Protoss goes for in this, uh, and it's quite different from what we saw in game two, which was a massive ground army with Arbiters there to cloak, Stasis, and Recall. You're forcing Terran into a very difficult balancing act. Goliaths can fight carriers uh, as long as they're in the right locations. Uh, but Dragoons and Zealots can fight Goliaths. 
And so you want your carriers, if you can, to target down their tanks if they're exposed. And then your carriers and your uh, ground army fight the Goliaths. Yeah. And it's, it's tough. It's very tough for the Terran to do. But generally, Terrans, um, if unless the Protoss is really good, can try to push it and stop this before it starts. But the disguising that Snow has done in this game has been so perfect, so well executed, yeah. that it, it doesn't seem like Flash at any moment to really uh, prepare. And so we are sitting here with Flash powering on three bases. It's Snow on four bases. And he is rapidly teching up to a monstrous carrier fleet, uh, and supplemented with a good ground army. He's going to get it. Uh, I find it interesting that he's opened up the center a little bit more. Because the carriers, the reason why they're going to be so strong here is how hard it is to rotate your army as Terran. But I feel like Flash's only chance is to do a direct push right now that just plows through absolutely everything. Now this push might be too strong. We're going to see. It's two carriers that he's hitting in exactly the moment where Protoss might be the weakest. Two carriers is not four. He forces a siege. He needs to back up again immediately. Only loses one Dragoon. Still buying time. Keep in mind this push is pointed towards the main here. It's not going to be easy to push into the main for no, the Terran. It certainly is not. You see him actually destroying the eggs here as he needs to make sure his army gets up there immediately. A small number of Dragoons are going to come in here to counterattack uh, with the carriers. I Pitching really like this. Enforcements is a huge thing right here. These sea chicks are oh so expensive. Oh my god, he needs to get that over there. All right, looks like Snow's going to start to take this battle on the high ground. That is a lot of siege tanks, though, to yeah, try to kill. I don't, you don't think it should be over here. The carriers are coming forward. Now, he's actually, OK, he's actually doing this perfectly. He can just barely, oh, you know what? With this carrier number, he doesn't quite have enough to just fight the Goliath. Well, Flash is making, interceptors. He's making turrets as well. So he is complementing his ground army with these, this static defense as well to try to push back those carriers. Snow does have more, but he needs to build interceptors. OK, he's coming out now. I think I think Flash might have done this just perfectly enough that you can't kill those. Uh, I think Snow is actually going to hold this, to be honest. Like, he's going to sure? maybe lose uh, a lot of the things in the main base, but he has four other bases right now as well. And this is four carriers. This will whittle things down over time. Yeah, he needs to start taking these fights over here with the carriers. And that's why it's very important that Terran gets as many turrets down as possible. He's starting to hit these tanks. And the Goliaths still don't have plus two, so the interceptors can I think fare reasonably well. I think actually the, the, there's just not enough interceptors, it actually. Might be. It I, might I think be. He, he did the math exactly perfectly. I'm Flash so stunned. This game. I am so stunned. Well, Snow right now trying to get more carriers out. They really, the more you get, the scarier they become. They well, scale so if, well. If he gets enough, he'll kill all this, but he yeah. just can't quite get it. And now the next wave of uh, Goliaths has come in here. And um, once again, Terran with a push into the main. How funny is that? Yeah, yeah. Right now he has five. He has three more making. So if he can okay. get up to eight, now he, he, they're about Rodos to pop. has to take this fight. He has to take this fight right over here right now. Yeah. He gets the other two out. He's going to send them back. There are, I believe, enough carriers that he can actually engage this. Now, yeah. Flash is using hold position micro and going for the interceptors instead of the source of the interceptors, which would be the carriers themselves. Uh, look at this. He's going to unpower these targets now. He doesn't want another carrier getting out. So that's it. Snow's going to be on seven carriers. Uh, which is, you know, obviously that is a big number. That is very scary. Yeah, he but doesn't think, have gateways elsewhere, though. Yeah, he's gonna. I, I think the flash might have uh, put him in. Uh, uh, like he's not able to put produce, is what I'm getting yeah, at. I, I yeah. want to have that more eloquent way to say that, but I'm just looking at that, and it's like he has no gateways. Yeah, he has no gateways. What do you, what do you want me to say? It's you know, a he, block. Yeah, there's a lot wrong. But the thing that's right is that he still has some mining bases and he has a lot of carriers. So uh, they're very strong in this map. Maybe he can rotate around and do something. Okay, we have the Goliaths again getting picked off one by one. Protoss needs to get infrastructure somewhere. He just doesn't have anything. Well, it's hard to even pick gates in any of these locations as well. He wants to down here, but look at this. Flash hitting this base immediately, realizing this is the scary base because it's where you could rebuild your infrastructure. Yeah. Again, I think this might be the most perfect game Flash has played out of everything we've seen here. Because After everything went GG, wrong. Hey, everything Snow did work, but Flash, and look, the, the math on trying to get in there and get that uh, attack off, you have to be so perfect in your timing. He had just enough to where the carriers could not do damage quickly enough.
Um, and without the turrets, that doesn't work either. Yeah. Like, everything about it. Flash was truly at a deficit, but maybe Snow rushed to the carriers a little bit too quickly. Maybe he should have focused on his ground army a little bit longer. Regardless, Flash plays a ridiculous game after getting behind and wins with a timing attack that shouldn't have even existed. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy, man. Um... <laughs> Flash is just crushing here. The amount that he is better than everyone in the world is, it's, you can't even explain it. It's like yeah. magnets or something. No one knows. No one knows how they work, Artosis. We can't explain them. I'm, I gotta say, dude, this has been such an impressive showing from Flash, especially when Snow's strategy worked out. Uh, we're not done yet, though. We are gonna go to a short break. We come back, game four in the ASL Finals. Justin Bieber's a zombie. My son spending time at your house. Some people fit right in. Strip. <laughs> what you did to me, it never goes away. Why are you doing it? How does it feel to be on the outside looking in? This is the most fun I've had in a long time. The man acts like the house still belongs to him. Not your house. Lights off! Henry! Everything I do, I do for us. Hello. 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 <웃음> 아, 결승에서 딱 이기면은 별풍선이 그냥 눈처럼 막 <웃음> 지금 뭔가 표정이 아, 내 생각에는 진짜, 네. 기대에 막 가득 차 있어. 언제부터 BJ 생활했지 그러면? 스타투에서 그치 스타투 망했죠. 네, 망했지 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 망해서 방황할 때가 있었어요. 알바하면서 어. 학교 다니면서 막 아무 끼였네. 네 영화 형이. 어 진영아. 너나 대신 게임 좀 해라. 해가지고 그때 방송을 했었는데 그럼 알바 반 주고 알바는 했죠 그래도 알바 알바 같이 하면서 그러다가 이제 군대를 갔다 오고 나서 어. 이제 세상을 알았어요 <웃음> 돈의 세상을 네. 안거 아니야? <웃음> 진짜 내가 그래도 사람 같이 살려면은 어. 돈은 있어야 된다 어, 자본주의에 네. 딱 떴구나 사람이 아니었어요 어. 그냥 그 군대 생활 하면 <웃음> 월급이 너무 적었거든요. 아. <웃음> 
아니 어쩐지 인터뷰할 때마다 꼭 팬들에게 한마디 시키면 은 기다리고 있겠습니다 라든지 억지로 막 내놔 이러는 건 아니잖아요 정말 기분 좋게 내가 올라갔다 축하해 주시면 고맙겠다 이런 명분으로 한번 방송 키는 거죠 그래서 결승전이 우승, 진짜 우승이 중요하겠네 우승이 절실해 <웃음> 윤철이는 뭔가 딱 팬들하고 진짜 약간 패밀리 같은 느낌이 들어 막 같이 밥도 먹으러 가는 것 같고 쪽쪽쿠라 그래요 가족들 <웃음> 어, 왜 오늘 안 입고 나왔어 못 입겠더라고요 왜왜왜 <웃음> 왜, 왜, 왜. 인기 많다며 제가 연신내 사는데 연신내 밖에는 안 돼요 딱 연신내까지는 입으시고 왜? 색 때문에 어. 사람들이 좀 의심 많이 해요 무슨 의심? 정치색의 의미 아니야? 장윤철의 넘버원 팬은 또 여자친구 아니야? 그죠 여자친구가 도움 되게 많이 주죠 응원 슬로건 진석들 있잖아요 SNS도 여자친구가 다 해주고요 윤석은 뭐해? 저는 쉬어요 네 <웃음> 야, 빨리 약간 나쁜 남자네 여자친구의 고충을 들어야 돼 내가 봤을 때 <웃음> 너무 혹사시키는 거 아니에요 여자친구 아니 아직 혹사 안 그래 더, 더 해야 돼요 <웃음> 더, 더 일해야 돼더 <웃음> 더 일해야 돼? 아 월급은 주니? <웃음> 왜 눈을 못 봐? <웃음> <웃음> 내가 더 잘할게 <웃음> 어떤 모습으로 이렇게 살고 싶어? 부드러운 이불 덮고 에어컨 잘때그 느낌 너무 좋아가지고 아 이불 장사를 해볼까 싶긴 했었는데 와 되게 오, 되게 특별하다 아니 진짜 이 정도? 저는 이불이랑 카페? 하면서 이제 방송 잘 되면은 그냥 저만 저 그때부터 이제 그때 그래. 되면은 저는 진짜 우승할 수 있을 것 같아요 빌드 진짜 뭘 해도 되거든요 그때 되면 네. 카페랑 이불 가게는 누구한테 맡긴 것도 그러니까 또 여자친구 하는 거야? 여자친구가 운영하면서 <웃음> 물론 BJ 생활이 지금 더 만족스럽지만 약간 후회한 적도 있어? 저는 BJ 후회한 적 없어요 아단한 네. 번도? 네 없어요 하면서 되게 만족스러웠기 때문에 <웃음> <웃음> 개인 리그 잘해서 우승하는 게 꿈이죠 그래서 내가 그 간절함에 조금 더 힘을 실어주고자 선물을 준비했어 윤철이가 경기장에 경기하러 올때 되게 많이 신경 쓰는 부분이 있더라고 그래요? <웃음> 늘 이렇게 맹고야 아 양말 <웃음> 맹고 양말을 신고 와가지고 어, 뭔가 이렇게 징크스 아닌 징크스인가? 약간 맞아요 그런... 근데 오. 저 대회 때 무조건 맹고 양말 신어야 돼요 저는 오 그래서 네. 아 그러면 은 진짜 긴 양말을 사주면 <웃음> 우리 쭈기가 더 잘하지 않을까 음... 인정? 진짜 관심 있는 거 인정? 어 네네 어, 그거 인정이에요 진짜 여자친구랑 같이 네. 결승전을 꼭 신고 오라 그러고 6결 내에 해봤어 어, 스타링 아, 별. 진짜요? 잘 신을게요. 어, 잠깐만. 아, 잠깐만. 아, 자, 누가 이렇게 가격 별로 안 됐니? <웃음> 잘 신겠습니다. 별이 <웃음> 된 거야. <웃음>
Well, uh, I'm not sure what he's going to be able to, to pull out from here. I, I hope that this little bit of time off, these interviews that we're going to have and everything can help him to get collected and show his best play yet. And let's go to those interviews now. Andy, go ahead. Okay, so we're going to have a guest interview before we get to the fourth set. And Sharp is our first guest. And you're here to cheer for Snow today, Sharp. Uh, how has Snow been playing so far? Uh, I don't think he's shown a um, full performance like he did in scrims and practice. And he shouldn't be nervous, but he's losing right now. So if he doesn't really uh, regain his poise, I think it's going to be a full zero right now. So I think he should um, regain his confidence. And Flash is an opponent Snow has been a one. So he really needs to um, regain his poise. First of all, I think he's gonna, you know, really have to step up his game. And the fans are all like rooting for him right now. So, you know, it's really um, sad that he's not performing at his level. And all the crowd and you, Sharp, are cheering for Snow right now. Uh, so, uh, would you like to send a cheerful message to Snow? And uh, Snow. Snow fighting. Snow fighting. Okay, just cheering for Snow. And thank you for your interviews, Sharp. And we have another special guest who is here to cheer for Flash, and it is Larva. Hi, Larva. Hello. And, you know, as expected, Flash is playing amazingly right now. He's ahead 3 0. How are you watching his games? First of all, I predicted to be a 4-0. Uh, so far, I think the predictions are right. Okay, the predictions are right. Uh, before the match, did you have any conversation with Flash? You know, I just um, sh um, did my greetings to him. And Flash um, definitely saw you um, rooting, for you, rooting, rooting for him at the venue. And would you like to... Uh, share a cheerful message with him. Uh, yes, uh, flash fighting. Thank you for your cheerful message, Lava. All right. Uh, Larva over there, I like that. That cheer. Yeah. Larva in a metal band, I can see that. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. We're going to be going into game four now. Again, guys, <laughs> Snow needs something, anything. Or Flash is going to close this out. 4-0. I don't know what else to say, Artosis. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's showing his real strength. Can, can Snow fight back? That's the big question. That's what we're waiting for. Uh, our next map is a one-on-one -on -one map. Occasionally, you do have uh, the most insane PBTs on one-on-one -on -one maps, especially as far as yeah. openings go. Yeah. Well, you definitely have all sorts of options to proxy buildings as Protoss and put that pressure on, maybe even steal a gas. Uh, Flash has great counters to that, though, so I don't know if that's exactly what you want to do here. Yeah, that, I mean, we saw Rain try that, and it completely backfired. But again, you just got to take it one game at a time. He just needs to start that comeback. But Flash, I mean, I mean look, game three, Snow's plans basically went perfectly. Yeah. And Flash still it found really an angle away <laughs> to get in there and get that win. He's unreal in that regard. It's it, it, who even knows how he does it. Uh, but look, here's the thing. I think that Snow can clear his mind and, and play well here because it can't get worse than this. To be Don't honest, Trio so. at this point, if you get 4-0, that's what everyone on Earth expects right now, probably including Snow. So. When that's the case, when you're such an ultimate underdog and it seems like fate has decided, or maybe God decided for himself because that's what we call him, that Flash is going to beat you. I mean, it, I feel like maybe this is the moment where Flash puts his name on the board. You know so he prepped for every map. You know he came in here with a plan for every single yeah. game. I mean, you have to. You don't say, oh, I'm gonna practice the first six maps. So, <laughs> Snow's coming in here with something. I just don't know what it is. I'm so curious. And Flash has to be about as relaxed as he could ever be. He, he, is, about, so. he is about to only further cement his legacy here. Mm -hmm. I think in his own mind. 
So we're going to New Bloody Ridge again on one-on-one -on -one map. The first to four wins is the ASL champion. Flash with three wins, Snow with zero, at least so far. We're hoping he can start that here now. Otherwise, Flash will move on, and our story will end here for season eight of the ASL. All right, it is time, Tasteless. Let's see it. Can Flash just destroy Snow as he's destroyed Rain? It might happen. We'll see. Our game is now ready to load up. Game four on New Bloody Ridge. Snow versus Flash starts now. Let's go. Fight. here we just end all of esports Dude, it, okay we this was uh, it was all leading up to this moment he yeah, did it yeah oh well, we have the most players yet thinking that snow is going to win so that's good yeah he got a um, four you know it, just to, to mention about flash you know he has plenty of he has like every record basically right he has three msls giving the gold badge three osls giving him the gold mouse three asls giving him he got a golden ruler and a golden trophy yeah. Because it was just like he did three in a row and it was three and it was like, well, we just have to give him a bunch of yeah, stuff. Yeah, we're running out of gold stuff to give him. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And and here he is looking for that next championship. He's won so many smaller tournaments as well that we don't even bring up. He's won two of the GOM TV StarCraft One tournaments. He's won WCG World Championship. Yep. He's done everything. Casted by Young Tasels back then. My God, he's just the amount that he is the best can't be overstated. Now, in this game, we did have a probe sent out before the gateway. Uh, is he going to come in here for a gas timing? Is this timing correct to get I, the I gas? Thought, I thought I it was not, but well, I guess it actually is. He could cancel an SCV though, just make right. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah, he actually didn't even have to cancel. That was it was so tight to hit just before a 12 gas. So, but, uh, I mean, he's it, you can still harass with it and whatnot. It's, yeah, sure. I mean, it, it, you're still, you can still be annoying with it, but yeah, it does appear that came out a little bit late, and that was intended to, uh, you know, stop you know, the gas from being mined. Uh, oh, he's got to be careful. You know, I'm getting a little bit worried that we're seeing uh, not the best play here from Snow like we had in game one and two, and even three. I feel like he might be demoralized here. Possibly. Uh, all right. Well, the, the probe going to continue its harassment. He hasn't lost yet. The Marine's going to be coming out, so he's going to have to get out of here. Where will Snow go from this? Is he just going to take an expansion, try to bring the game a bit later? I'm not sure. Um, we're about to have the factory throw down here as well, and we'll uh, we'll see if it's just going to be a command center. I mean, the, look, Flash can do whatever he wants now. You have four games. You only got to win one more, and you're the champion. It's very true. There's a lot of builds that he can just throw into the wind at this point. I have no doubt, though, he's just going to do whatever he had practice and the idea to do for this game. And so uh, we don't have any Dragoon range yet, but we should have that starting soon. And there's the first factory. Again, we're just waiting to see what type of game the two players want. We're getting to the point where there are uh, different forks in the road. Uh, that they can take the game into. I mean, this is what made game one so exciting was because it was such two two very uh, peculiar build orders starting out that never really interact with each other. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be uh, actually one Dragoon, no Dragoon range, Nexus, quick expand here. Yeah. Um, a very standard build overall. And yeah, no, it's, it's, it's quite good. And it is usually uh, intended to respond to a build like what Flash is doing, which is a yeah. very quick command center. Um, and, uh, you know, just one factory. He only has one SCV mining gas now. 
So. Yeah, and the Flash is playing a very safe build here. He's got three Marines and the bunker before Command Center. So that's just, it's extremely safe. He's also zoning out the probe to, uh, you know, hide what he's doing. You, you expect that it's a Command Center, but it's always in the back of your mind that he could be doing something else. Sure, sure. Like a two-factory play. And that, that's one of the things that makes Protoss players quite insecure at the early part of this matchup, is you, you're just waiting to get some kind of confirmation so you just know what they're doing. Yeah. In general, those plays can be very risky, so you... Okay, per 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 perfect body much. block there. No further intel. Now, it is Dragoon range and an immediate robo. I think he actually had to skip his third Dragoon to get that robo out. Mm -hmm. um, and so what he's doing is he's going to have enough that he can, like, you know, shoot stuff down if it's close to him, like scouting SCVs sure. and not much else. And I imagine just knowing the kind of player Snow is, he probably wants to go into a Reaver here. We'll yeah, see, though. We'll most, see. Most likely. I feel like if you go into three-gate observer this game, you're not giving yourself the type of chance that you want to to have to show that you can do. Well, especially just for the, the style that, that, that Snow's shown uh, to be so strong. Oh, my God. Is Flash going to just make a third, third CC? on location. Now, I'll tell you what. If there was the ever a build that uh, you wanted to be doing. Now, hold on. Do we have... Is he so going to just get one Observer here and then go Reaver, or is he just going to skip it? Because it's hard to say right now. Yeah, it could be either way. Actually. This is actually a risky build here by Flash. It is risky. But, you know, he says, all right, well, you can't get across the map right now. I'll just take a third CC. We'll see if you can even punish this. Yeah, well, he's laying mines all over the place, and you have to play a little bit defensively against this. You can't just run out and run into oh. mines. You have to get... Okay, this, yeah. is, this is now not the uh, counter build. Now... To be fair, right, if he goes for three gate Dragoons with uh, Observer and he just goes directly towards Flash's base, this can become tough to hold because Flash has focused only on mines and vultures. So that far. is very true, Artosis. So there's situations where the thing is, he probably won't even go up that ramp to see if there is a uh, command center because this is very bizarre. Yeah, this is actually not even in the builds. Oh, okay, now. Sees the SCV going up. He might have been scouting this anyways, but this is a big deal. Okay, so now he's going to see that first SCV. He wants to just get a kill on this. Oh, I love this. Takes that high ground fight against the Siege Shank. He's sending some of their Dragoons out as well. Okay, he's going to have to back up. Now, there's more Dragoons inbound here. All right, the Observer is coming as well. Again, out of all the builds we expected, this is just one we never would have factored in here coming no, from Flash. No. This is actually... Uh, a little bit against most RTS school of thought, mm -hmm. but uh, the idea is that uh, if Snow doesn't respond to it immediately, he's going to die. Uh, oh. But Snow is, of course, responding immediately to it. Now, he needs to keep that Observer alive. Well, he keeps the Observer alive, but these Dragoons will end up dying. Great body blocks with the SCVs. He's getting that damage on. These will all fall, but very few units for Flash still. Yeah, and he just executes this. Now, there's more Dragoons coming. Every tank that is killed is it's pretty huge, but now he has two tanks in siege mode, and I think the angling here is just not actually one where you can run in and fight. Well, he's going to try it. He gets up here, trying to take down the siege tank. Will he actually end up getting two it? Two more volleys. Yep, he gets it. All right. Uh, he's killed He's killed. I think some we're going to have another observer tanks. go down here. He messed oh. up again with his observer. I think we're seeing Snow basically run out of gas here. This is Snow oh, really man. getting humiliated, you know? Yeah, and from here, he's actually got his Stargate going down, which means he's going to go into Carriers right away. Now, the previous game where he went into Carriers, he tricked Flash in like 20 ways, and Flash's expansion was slow and everything. This is yeah. the quickest third I've ever seen in TVP. Yeah, basically ever. So the odds of these Carriers working, I would say, is not high. Well, the carriers, you're not going to be able to get out in front of anything. I mean, when you have three bases immediately, three gases too, by the way, um, and there's no shuttle play at all here. I, I really, I'm surprised I misread how Snow is going to behave on this. I'm, he really just did want to go for a lot more observer play and a lot less reaver play in some of these games. Um, there's nothing you're really getting out ahead of. Now, that being said, it's going to be harder to stop the... Uh, the carriers from ever coming out here. You know, he should be able to get his four. But this is the third observer we've seen go down, Artosis. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a little bit painful. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, what his plan is going to be. He's loading up a shell right now, but I think Flash is going to be pretty impenetrable at the moment, right? He's got a lot of missile turrets up. 
quite a few. Those are going to gun down uh, shuttles, any shuttles on a one-way journey when you attack in this this type of game. It's got the it's double also, armory coming up. Now that uh, Terran's got turrets and tanks on the high ground, that's not a real breakable location, you know? Mm -hmm. If it was simply on the low ground in an open area, then yeah, maybe, but... Yeah, and also, the, the, the third base sort of covers... Ah, it even gets spotted by a mine. The third base also kind of allows you to cover the natural as well from those tanks, you know? Okay, but he's going to go for it. Here we go. Well, he not get that tank at least. But it, does he have enough to actually push in here? Let's see. The bunker is still up. A lot of tanks. Flash pulls that one back. Oh, my God. The Dragoons are getting killed off so quickly. Okay, well, he gets some kills off there. Now, shuttle... I'm just trying to shuttle up. The snow is very good at actually breaking some of these positions. So let's see if the punish can, can fall through here. Every tank you get, it's pretty huge. He's going to come in once more. Oh, yeah, maybe. Let's see. Can he get that tank? Oh, he does snipe it. He is a master at getting rid of those tanks. He's going to try to keep coming in. The problem is, is that the momentum that Flash has from those three bases is just so high. Yeah, it's huge. His production's not being slowed here. But you know what? If, if oh, no. Oh, oh no. God. Oh, no. That could kill two goons. Got to be careful of that. Completely end the rush, too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, look, trading for the sea chinks right now, it slows down pushes that'll come up. And he does have three Stargates going carriers. So is there some world where he catches Flash off guard and Flash has no Goliaths? Maybe. That seems to be what the hope is. So Snow is going hard into these carriers. It's a little bit expected here. Just This is sort of what the meta looks like right now. Carriers are, and he scans that, so yeah. he'll confirm where that is as well. Snow actually supply blocked here for a second. Well, this is the moment where Flash just starts making Goliaths. Yeah, this is the problem, is that once you see that, you just switch all your production to Goliaths. Yeah, pretty much. Let's remember that there's not really a lot of Dragoons anymore. There weren't a lot of tanks either, but if there's not a lot of Dragoons as well, the Goliaths, oh my god, and that was three fresh Dragoons. Not so fresh anymore, are they? No. If those dragoons are in my refrigerator, I'd throw them out, Artosis. <laughs> okay, so it, he has his first carriers coming out. He is taking his fourth base. But really, when you line this up with that tripod game, things look a lot worse for Snow now yeah, I than mean, they the, did then. The tripod game uh, leaves it hard for us to really try to speculate <laughs> yeah. as to whether or not Flash can come in here with a push that just crushes through. So what, we're about to have, I want to say, three carriers and then We'll eventually get to six. Six, six is a lot. Six is a lot. The problem is there should be there should be more tanks than dragoons, I think. Yeah, there there could end up being, and he has a lot of factories going right now. He's got his upgrades moving. Um, the one thing that's kind of nice is that there are multiple hills here, so you can take high ground engagements for a little bit longer as Protoss. But his army's so small, it's so tiny. Yeah, it's it's a. Uh... And it's going to run into another mine, and I mean, this is just getting worse. Uh, now we have the three carriers out, but I, I think that, I think this is actually so straightforward. It's, he just kills him, right? I think so. He has not gotten up He's to eight interceptors yet. Supply. He has four in one of those. That's yeah. not enough interceptors. All right, well, he's going to start off killing this base. Already, most of the probes were evacuated, so that was a good uh, yeah. move by Snow to move those probes over to his new fourth, which will be his third. That is a lot of Goliath, so. Okay, looks like Snow's going to try to run around the army, maybe a counterattack. But the thing is, Snow can go home. I mean, uh, Flash can go home with this army to defend, or he can attack. Okay, now this is a pretty good idea to try to come in here from behind. He wants to cut off reinforcements. But look, I mean, your Flash's macro engine is already too good, and this is all because of the greedy three bases yeah. that were not effectively punished here. That is a lot of clients right there. Snow trying to hold off the reinforcements even. We'll see if he's able to do that with that high ground advantage. Doesn't seem that way. He might have to back up. In the meantime, his carriers picking off what they can across the other side. Not really killing a whole lot as of yet. And the push continues forward. Again, he forgot the upgrade. He forgot the interceptor upgrade, Artosis. Oh, did he? Or yeah, are those he's... the new carriers? I, I believe, well, maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. I'm waiting for him to click on a carrier that doesn't have four interceptors. You see yeah. in this? Yeah. yeah right. no, oh, no, no, he's, he's got eight. He's got eight. Okay. okay. My bad. Well, there's a lot of Goliaths, so killing off quite a few interceptors here. 
Going after that next base as well. Snow does not have a lot left right now. Flash is massacring the best PBT player out there. Yeah, I mean, this is the best Pros for Staren we've ever seen, at least as a player. And it is about to be 4 0 I think. Oh, absolutely. Now, let's see. Uh, he's going to come in. All these turrets have finished. There should just be enough that the interceptors begin to thin out. Well, and then all you tanks. have is this Terran. Uh... Well, hold on. He's actually targeting uh, the tanks down pretty well. You know, Snow is so damn good, man. Yeah, I mean, once the tanks are gone, your goons can help clean up the Goliaths. Yeah. Goons pair well against Goliaths. Yeah, your goons are actually great counters to Goliaths. So. He actually did not lose this base yet. More units coming, though, for Flash here. And as he pushes in here, I, I don't think that you can stop it. Just so many units rolling across the map. This in Axis is, uh, yeah, he actually target fires it down just to confirm that that will be eliminated. And it's now going to be Protoss on one base mining, and that's the base in his main. GG! And that is that. Flash 4 0s the finals and wins his fourth ASL. My God, man. I cannot believe he dominated that hard. I mean, I know it's Flash, it's insane. He made that look so easy. This could have been the moment that Flash would have been unable to stop Snow. It could have been a close series. It was not. Flash 4-0, the greatest gamer of all time, reminds the world who's on top. That's right. And you can look at this in a very interesting way. Flash played in seven ASLs. He won four of them. Flash versus the world in the best of seven of ASLs that he played. He won 4-3. <laughs> OK? Yeah. Flash has beaten everybody. There is no one like him, and I don't know if there ever will be again. Yeah, he did it. The ASL Season 8 Champion Flash. We got an interview now. Andy, go ahead. Flash has beaten Snow in a 4 0 clean sweep fashion. And he's now the ASL Season 8 winner. You haven't given up a single set. And you became victorious today. And now you've won four ASL championships out of eight. Even in a difficult situation, you held your head, head up high. And now you've accomplished 10 championship titles in your career. How do you feel now? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> first of all, you know, it, it was an easy, easy win, <laughs> unlike, <laughs> I like, like I hadn't expected. I think it's been uh, more than one year since I last uh, won the championship. So, you know, the fans have doubted whether I am the best or not. You know, I haven't been able to win the championship for a uh, couple of seasons. And it, I think I proved myself today, so I'm just really satisfied and happy right now. Season 5 and Season 6, and season, five and season, six. Uh, since season 7 you took hiatus, and now you won the championship title. And I'm guessing the fans are very instrumental to your victory today. Uh, the fans always have high hopes of me. So, you know, I slept less and I practiced more, more than anyone else. And I try to um, deliver the best performance for my fans. But I'm just so happy right now. I just want to um, see my fans really quick. And you've gained phenomenal tension. And now you're stepping forward to the glorious moment in StarCraft. You know, you've become the living legend now. Flash, you always deliver the best performance for your fans every match. How do you do this? What is your objective, Flash? Well, my objective was um, to win four championships and win the 10th championship title. And I've accomplished that today. So I'm just really happy. 
And there are so many fans here. The venue is astir with your fans. Uh, what's your aim for your um, championship title? Every tournament I attend, I want to win the championship. You know, look at you, Flash. I've seen you for uh, more than 10 years, and today is definitely the best moment ever. Once again, congratulations and thank you for your performance today. And now we will commence the award ceremony. Thank you, Andy. Uh, we're going to go to the awards ceremony now. Which Flash is uh, all too familiar with our toes. So. I know, right? Damn, man, 4-0, are you kidding me? It's unreal. Whoa! God, he is good. His <laughs> level is... I'm just stunned. Yeah, I think everybody is. I mean, I, you know, Snow looks so strong leading up to this. Uh, and I feel like with each passing game, Flash looks stronger and stronger and stronger. He really did. Yeah. Hey, and that's that's how he does it. Quick uh, interview with our CEO, Kevin. Go ahead, Andy. Okay, we'll have an interview with Kevin, the CEO of Africa TV. Well, it's been a long time since I last visited the Children's Grand Park. And now it's full. And I guess you guys are quite disappointed that the match finished quick, quickly. It was an enjoyable match, it was a thrilling match. And a sincere thank you to all the fans who are here to fill the venue. And thank you to all the KT for uh, sponsoring us. And we will continue on with the ASL. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Kevin. Uh, I love casting here at Africa TV, man. I love the StarCraft shows we put on. But what a very special one this was tonight. Yeah, a big reminder to the world that Flash is more dominant at StarCraft than you can be or anyone has been at anything else ever. I mean, it's just insane. Um, now, to the runner-up, here's Snow. And he does not go home empty-handed, and I, I look forward to seeing more of Snow. You know, Snow is sort of a new top, top, top tier player. He's going to go home with 10 grand and flowers. Snow loves flowers, guys. He so does. Uh, <laughs> and you know what? He's already done his military service, so he's going to be around forever. He's going to yeah. continue to improve, and maybe when Flash gets out of the army, he can get his revenge. Yeah. Um, and look, I mean, Snow got this far, the only person that stopped him is Flash. Flash is now retiring for, uh, you know, I guess not indefinitely, he has to do his military service, we don't know if he'll come back, but hey man, the world's yours, Snow. There's always next ASL. Yep, yep, and I'm sure that you will do very, very well in it as well. And now we're going to be giving the Flash the first place award. The flowers, the check, and of course the ASL trophy. Uh, we're going to have our main sponsor from OLED TV come up uh, to hand that check off. So thank you to our sponsors for supporting us. You know, without this kind of support, we can't have events like this. So thank you, OLED TV. Living legend, and so now we're going to give Flash Lee Young Ho the uh, champion. The one, there's only one of them. There'll only ever be one of them. That's right. The ultimate. Yeah. What a. It's unreal. Like I know all these things about Flash. I watch him all the time, and I have since he first came on the scene. It's just, it's unreal how strong he truly is. As someone who's dedicated over 20 years of my life to this game. Yeah. It's unreal, seriously. He's such a talent. He's such a genius. He's so brilliant. Well, it's, a, it's incredible that, you know, and StarCraft is still one of the most played and one of the most competitive games there is in the yeah. world, you know. Um, 
and it, the fact that he is this dominant when the game is this active, when the game has been this soft, there's so many resources to learn it. Yeah. Um, and he is still just able to crush it. Well, I mean, he's done so much for the game and the scene. See his parents here Hola once again. ASN. Yeah, they have to get tired of this by now. I know. They have to go to so many finals. It's becoming pretty standard to just show up here and yeah. watch the kid dominate. They've been almost as many finals as me at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, guys, this has been fun. I, uh, I really enjoyed casting this. I'm sorry it wasn't closer, but what are you going to do? I mean, Flash is just that good. So. Yeah. yeah. Well. I mean, it was it was fun still to just see him put on this clinic of how to destroy the best yeah. players out there. Uh, it, you know, it's going to be sad. He's still going to stream some. Uh, it's still going to be yeah. talking StarCraft, and he said stream maybe one or two Afrika games TV. a day. So uh, definitely visit his stream on Afrika TV. Thank you, everyone, for watching. This has been uh, a great season. It's been a blast, guys. We love you. GSL Codes uh, continues on on Wednesday. We'll see you there at 6.30 p.m. KSD. We love you. Have a good morning, afternoon, or night, wherever you are. Bye-bye.